Rebel with a cause. BK all day, baby. It's rebel season. The real rebels are back. I got the mind of a king. You should really protect them. Everybody talking, but rebel really the next. I got the mind of a king. Spread the never take this. Slavery, fake hip hop, you dead if you were racist. I got the mind of a king. You could never replace this. Blood from the mud, no love, so I'ma say. I got the mind of a king. I know where I am from now. I'ma wake him up, you keep him sleeping, it's up to me I got the mind of a king Peace, peace, peace to the family Welcome to Rebel Drama Table I'm Rebel with a cause RebelVision.com, Ancient Chemistry Clothing Goats Umbrella you can find me uh, anywhere online, Reb Reddington, whatever, whatever, whatever. Y'all already know us. Got my co-host. And what I kill in the field, I always stand in the battlefield. You know what I mean? Tonight, but well, I plug my stuff in too, you know. You check check out our website, Sun Goddess. I mean Shelly Army Set Products dot, dot com. Check out our Facebook page, Sun Goddess, Sun Goddess Sense Light page. And check out our um, IG page, Kate and that's Apparel, and also Sun Goddess underscore Sense. You know what I'm saying? We got we got our uh, African Apparel. You know what I mean? You sell Shea Butters. You know everything on the natural tip, um, bath soap, scent it. You know sugar scrubs and all this stuff. And check it out. Go to the website and check us out. Shirley Armistead Products dot com. Yeah. <clears throat> Salute to Olu. That's the brother in, in the ATL who make the crowns. Salute the brother. Yeah, Olu, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah I ain't seen that brother in a minute, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I just was with him. Good brother, good brother. <clears throat> Cop the ill ass crown from him too. I'm a de- I'm a I'm a I'm a debut it one of these days. But yeah, yeah, what we got on this uh what we got on stage for tonight, bro? We got the brother Black Power banging, man. About to come in in a minute. You know what I mean? He want to talk about the radical measures of unity, man. So, you know, Black Power bang, you know, he from LA, man. He from Compton. He from Compton. He out here at the ATL. He always re- representing that RBG. You know what I'm saying? He always got something to say. So he gonna come on, man. <clears throat> he definitely one of the real brothers who uh got his life on the line. Right. I salute him for for whatever he do. He, he a real brother. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he got remedy. He got a lot of remedies. So y'all stay tuned. We're going to hear a lot of answers to a lot of the questions you might have. So, right. No, he, yeah, he always got, he always have. No, this is going to be his third time on the show, too, right? Yeah, yeah. He always got something to say. Yeah, everything else good, my G. Yeah, we good, man. You know, like I said, we out here, you know, stand on the ground, putting in work. We just came from, uh, you know, confident woman. We just came, we did a like a, uh, well, we came not, we had fed the community this time, this past, uh, what was that, Saturday? Mm-hmm. Saturday, you know what I'm saying, at the Beloved Community, Beloved Community Church of Atlanta. Shout out to Keith Slider. You know what I'm saying? The trap passed in the house, you know what I mean? Hey, man, they gave, man, it was a good event, man. Yeah, yeah, hey, man. Dude, you should see his new shelter, man. Man, that day is cold, man. Right. Right. Man, you need to just come down there and see it, too, man, with your own eyes. That's my first time seeing the finish and people actually come in. I know that, man. You know, he helped he help his brothers and sisters out there, so that's really what that's about, man. That's why I go to his church every blue moon, man. No, gotta give big ups to that man. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, man. So I always feel, you know, we always feel good. We go down there. And they, uh, you know, they ain't seen me and Shelly in a while, man. Everybody was happy to see us, man. So I like, yeah, we just got to start. These coming back, showing our fake man, dude. When people show me love, boy, I gotta show them love back, man. That's the law right there. Yeah. You know, that's 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 the rules, man. You already know. Straight up. 
that's one of your homes. They, that's one of your homes. So right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it is. That's that real black feeling, man. You don't get that everywhere. Yeah, it's the real black feeling. Yeah, yeah. I probably don't believe in everything you talk about, but I know, you know it's just real down there. You know what I mean? It's real down there, so I got to rock out with that. Those are the only pastors I kind of respect that even though they, you know, spitting on Jesus, but uh, they add more reality to, yeah. to their sermon. It's more reality than just say, yo, love love white Jesus, love white Jesus. I don't know if it's white Jesus. But they right. be bringing in the laws, the mind frame of a Christian into your reality. What you really got to pray for. Uh, F all of those uh, prosperity churches. Wear it up. Yeah, that's the yeah, that's right. <clears throat> that's I'm just full of shit. Oh, all yeah. y'all. I'm not giving you a thousand dollars. You can tell God my prayer. <laughs> Why don't I just talk to him myself? You know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, then you know, I, I don't really blame it on them, man. I can't. I wouldn't be no fool to give up. No, I wouldn't be no fool like that, man. Uh, uh-uh. uh. Mm-hmm. Then, then will make that make, make that even more messed up, man. Make that even more messed up. You talking all this shit in the ghetto, right? Literally, right around the corner, man. You know what I'm saying? Right around the corner, a walking distance. So Somebody get out of here with that bullshit, man. The damn past. Yeah. Man. I'm not giving you no money to talk to God. Right. Yeah, that part. The, the, the white man tried that from the early 70s. He's still doing it. <laughs> Those evangelists, how the fuck did they come to the hood? Right. Come on, son. You seen the shit. Yo, uh, uh, I'm going to show you my power of Jesus. And then he, he front like he throwing some, and then they all fall. Or they heal you. Oh, this lady got sc- scolerosis. And I'm gonna touch her back, and she's just gonna walk straight. That lady is on a team, man. All that shit fraud, all of it. Stop fucking paying for prayer. This shit is crazy, man. Niggas is so sleep. Yeah, I know, right? That yeah, that actually works. They used to do that in the third world. They was in like Africa and and Cambodia and South America, gaming them for all those years. Right. Yo, these passes I know, man. Only need a $50 million plane. And then they make the people pay for the shit. No. He got the fit. No, nah, it was 60, what, $65 million plane. See, even he even got worse. it. Even worse. He got it. They paid for him. This man, $65 million plane. Creep Low Dollar got one too. Yeah. They paid for it. He said he needed 60. <laughs> <laughs> How much money be in the black church, yo? Golly, man. It, it, it's These so people old. bought this man a goddamn $60 million goddamn jet. Man, I'm not giving you. I, man, I'll rob his ass if I get a chance. To. I ain't gonna lie. I was telling somebody that the other day. Why we don't rob I'll rob his motherfucking ass and feel good about it. Look how this sounds. Why we don't go rob a church? Oh, we doing Robin Hood, by the way. If we did take Creflo money, we going to give it to the people. Here, Hell take yeah. Your money back, miss. Here, take your money back. This should say you gave them 8000 Here, man. Take that shit back. Right. Fuck out of here. Your prayer <laughs> ain't hit the guard. But your money got to his pocket, though. Right. So take that AGs, put it back. Now go to your bed. Get on your knees. Put your hands together and talk to God yourself. Right. These are the real yeah, charlatans. Like that. They the real charlatans, man. I can't believe it work either. Yeah, I mean. <clears throat> but I don't know, man. Wake up, people. First of all, <laughs> you the real Jew. If you a Christian watching this, you the real Jew. You're not a Gentile. That right. Bible was talking about you. If you were Christian, you left with Moses. You left an African civilization called Egypt, right? Right. 
So Moses was black, learned in everything of the Pharaoh. They found him in the Nile, right? So he was with Africans. That's African science. The real Jews are black, right? So I'm fucking right. walking around like a Gentile or thinking we ham. We not ham. They got us all messed up, man. If you a Christian watching this, go be an Israelite. Go right. study Israelite, yeah. man. Right. That's what you really are. That's what we'll respect if we see you say you a Christian. Or a Rasta. A oh, Rasta, yeah. yeah. Too. Because they go to the origin in Ethiopia and all that good stuff. And at least they know the origin is us. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's what I always say. Jesus, my nigga. Still, the white man still on the wall. Still on the wall. <clears throat> twenty twenty two, man. Our guest should be popping in any moment now. Yeah, sure. But yeah, twenty twenty two, he's still on the wall. I look at African documentaries, and even when one of my peoples went, there's Jesus on walls everywhere. White Jesus, that is. I can't wait to go to Africa, yo. I'm banging on. I mean, was it the, was it the certain part of Africa? Everybody. All of it. South Africa ain't even black. That's first of all. And if you go to Gambia and if you just spread out that white man everywhere, a few pockets, they know what's up, but that white man all through Africa. But a lot of, um, a lot of parts of Africans, uh, Africa, uh, Muslims as well. That's the other problem we had. Yep. The other half is Islam. Praying to the Arabs. And we the original Islam too. A lot. Yeah. A lot is a law. Do y'all research. A lot. That is a female, by the way, too. The original right. rebel was saying this. I dare somebody hit me in the DM and challenge this. A lot is the female deity of Islam. Because they everything is washed. But yeah. I'm telling you, a lot is a girl, and that's the original. Uh law is Arm, leg, leg, arm, and head. The body. A lot. Fuck out of here, man. That shit is all lies, man. You're praying to somebody that don't look like you. But if you go to China, Jesus is Chinese. So right. Let's use that science, y'all. Your God has to look like you. Now find your black. Yep. Tired of this shit. I might not even come back from Africa, yo. They might get me. Because I'm not playing. I go everywhere. The museums, uh, any black event. Like I said, I'm on the news banging on two homosexuals trying to kiss near RBG tent. I can't allow it. I let niggas do whatever they want. Because if I gotta hurt a black person, that's my last, that's my last uh, you know, that's the last straw. So I'll be letting niggas do what they want. If I, I'll shut niggas down too if I had to, but I'll be letting niggas do what they want. Nobody else can do that. White people all in the Met, Chinese people all in the uh, British Museum looking at us, taking notes on how to, how to keep lying to us or lying to themselves because a lot of them think Egyptians were white and then some Arabs think they were Arabs. That's after the 25th dynasty, man. Can we go to the first, all the way to the 18th? We do original source coding over here. And we got the brother in the house, Black Power Bing. Let's give a black hand for Black, black Power. Oh, matter of fact, that's John. Let's give a black hand for John Hargrove. Head of the U.S. 421 Division, ATL. What up, Jim? 
Man, just chilling, man. How y'all been? Everything good. Everything good. Good to see you again. Likewise. Yeah, yeah. We got Black Power Banger about to pop in. Yeah, I seen. I seen he's guests on the show. You know, had to had to come see what's going on with my brother Matula. You know what I'm saying? Brother Matula in the house tonight. But well, we was just talking about white Jesus all over Africa. What you got on that? White Jesus all over Africa? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you know that to uh, be true? I mean, hold on. Give me a minute on that one. Um, but now we was just talking about if we seen it, you know, maybe in documentaries or, you know, in real time from videos all through Africa now. But I see white Jesus all over the walls. He be right in the hood, right on some concrete, right in the, the, the beginning of every church, mass statues. And then the other half is Islam worship. So Africa need to wake up for real. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Uh, the, the image of a white god is a, is a big thing uh, outside of the, the islam islam's not supposed to have any images of uh of muhammad or god or you know what god looks like so i give them uh, not necessarily a pass but i give them uh I'm, I'm less worried about them than the uh the images of a white god you know from 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 our teachings that's a uh, absolutely no you know what i mean um we cannot worship uh, things that don't look like us. You know, we can't have gods, uh, supreme beings um, that are made in our image, but they don't look like us. You know, like that's that's absolutely no for, for us. Exactly. That's we just were saying that. But but wait, even in uh, I know a law they make him faceless. But yeah. the Arab still takes credit for Islam. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, I mean, we got to get with our African brothers on that. Like, it seems like, you know, we've kind of given that up. Um, when we when we say Mecca, you know, is the is the center for Islam and that's outside of Africa. Um uh, we already got a problem, <laughs> you know. Uh, we're worshiping other lands at that at that point. They really worshiping the black woman. Uh, that Mecca got a black box. That's yeah, really the black woman's womb. If y'all don't the cabal. So, the black woman was God at one time all over the world, and they changed it all up. So you know. Got a lot of work to do. It's still working. Got to pass down the plate. But we still got like 60 more years, brothers. So we know we still we still working. We might see we might see the grace. We might see it. I remember somebody on the other show said, I think John said it. We might not see it in our lifetime. Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking right now. Like I'm, I, I hear you, and if we do, that's great. But we still have to work, you know, um, with, without with the expectation that we're not going to see the benefit of what we're doing. You know, um, if if we do, that's wonderful. But we still have to accept we might not see it, um, and and that's that's what that's just what my mindset is um, when I look at biblical texts. Uh, one of the main stories that comes out is Moses, you know, when it comes to redemption and um, reclaiming your, your, your birthright or your, your God given uh, divinity. Uh, Moses is a great story, but, you know, Moses understood that, uh, or he, he at least had the message that he's not going to get into the promised land. You know what I mean? All the work that he's doing, all the sacrifice that he's making, he's not going to make it. He's not going to get in, but uh, and he didn't even have no children. Wait, didn't he have children? I don't know if he had children, but um, 
It wasn't even for his, you know, I mean, it was more for his children and for his his tribe and his nation, for the you know, but not necessarily for him directly. That's how we all working. I don't have to see it. I just know we have to work toward it. Yeah. It would be nice if we did see a piece of it before we go, though. Yeah, but listen, man, like, like I said, like, we got to have a mindset of we ain't going to see it, and, and also we ain't going to get credit for it, you know? <laughs> Facts. We don't That's the truth right they there. Pay. They don't, this job don't pay. It pay in another way. Yeah. It pay in the existence. It pays in a, a future foundation. I'm cool with all of that. Black African supremacy all day. The, the only way we can get a reward is, is from the creator, you know? That's the only reward we should expect. The blessed to know who they are. Yeah. You know? Black Power Bank say again. Give them about five minutes. Count them. He already bite. He all, you know, he just got a bite. He already a bite, man. <laughs> On his bike? Yeah, he got a bike. I don't know. He's just... Test. I mean, he have a video chatting me. I'm like, oh, he like a, I can sell him all his bikes, so he must be close to the crib. Motorcycle bike? Yeah, he got a bike now, man. Oh, my God. Yeah, he got a bike, man. Oh, he saw he in a, a, um, a bike club? Right. Yeah, he got a uh, he in some kind of black um, bike club and stuff. He, he gonna talk about it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. What what else before Black Power Banger come on? What else is in the what else is in the news? Uh, you know, uh, cause man, I know, man, this stuff crazy was going on out here, man. Cause Bitcoin uh, and crypto done died. It went down like eighty percent. Wow. Damn. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ethereum, even Doge went down. The the lowest coin mm. on the scale. Yeah, Doge coin. I think it's like eight cent right now. Mm. And Bitcoin, yeah, yeah, Bitcoin, I gotta look into that. Eighty thousand, sixty thousand to thirty, something like that. A lot of money was lost. <laughs> So I don't know the crypto. Yeah, it's, it's supposed to get um get uh right that wave at the beginning of it. Just like every scheme, you gotta be in the first wave. Yeah, the first waves of it, man. Yo, whatever happened to uh what what y'all what they call it when all the blacks put in money and then they pay one and then they pay the second one? What, what was they called? Oh that? yeah, I know what you're talking about. What's the name of that? About a year ago, everybody was trying to do ah, it. Damn, it's on the tip of my gift The gifting gift joint. Yeah. That, that had to be a scam. I don't ever see him no more. Nah, it's gone. But you know, no um, you know. Chinese been doing that for a long time. That's how they build their business. Yeah. So you're supposed to really do it. Yeah. yeah. You're supposed to really, really do it, man. Chinese people still doing it. Doing that. Yeah. Rebel, like. You know what? That's that. That's something that popped up when the uh, when they started giving out them stimulus checks. Yep. And then it just disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> that's because everybody. I, I enjoyed it. One of I guess I enjoyed it too late, man. Everybody yeah. said, "Oh, but I got there. Like, oh, let me get in. I guess I enjoyed it. <laughs> I'm always enjoying it too late, man. <laughs> I'll never catch the first wave, man. Shit." <laughs> I don't know. What y'all think about uh what y'all think about uh the sisters dissing on um, the death of Kevin Samuels? Yeah, um y'all gotta hate I, white people like y'all hate black people, man. I right. That's real. This right. is crazy, man. Even though I wasn't down with what he was talking about, man, but god damn, I ain't celebrating nobody devil now, man. And I and actually that, that was for me. I actually was down with what he was saying. I ain't hear one word he said that was a lie. We we can't save black people without telling them the truth, my niggas. If yeah. you're overweight, I could gotta call you overweight. It's 92 law. There is no, yo, that's gonna hurt their feelings. That's gonna fucking 
That's bad to say. We don't live by that. We live by cosmic law, right and wrong, direct reality. My nigga, if you're a female and you weigh 240, you have to be overweight. No one, you, no, I'm not dissing nobody. I love black women. Black right, women right. is God to me. But in this American society, what are the laws? What are the beauty laws? Now, we don't have to follow them. But some, I've been saying this for about 10 years in New York. Our women kind of fell off with these jobs. They're doing what we do. Don't we be mad hungry when we come home? Yeah. They hungry too, my nigga. Because they sitting there for eight hours doing mad work. Some of them do, you know, physical work. So they got like a man pattern. So that, that energy loss, they have to feed it back. Yeah. So it's only right that they was gaining weight. Yeah. So don't think we're dissing you. We just want to see the best version of you. So what Kevin Samuels was saying to me is exactly what's necessary. Nobody talking about the rappers. Nobody talking about the kill culture. Nobody talking about the white man. Nobody talking about these fake ass gurus all over the internet claiming they have black power. <clears throat> we can't tell no more truth. So I ain't with that. I'm with all truth. Tell me the truth, nigga. You will never hurt my feelings. I'm going to direct my mind to your law, and then I'm going to analyze it and then go with it. These are little girls. Yeah. Can't hear the fucking truth. Only a few, big up to all the girls I've seen on that show who came on and was like, word, you right. Uh, I'm going to do something about that. <laughs> big up all of them. Everybody else, those is unconscious y'all gotta remember they're not even conscious that's that's the first stage of american black they still screaming jesus half of them is white jesus they're lost so they don't deal with truth <clears throat> and i don't know where they get he was so mean at he was like a grandfather to me I looked at it like that was somebody's grandfather. He looked like a grandfather talking that don't take no bullshit from his nieces and nephews. That's how I looked at it. So rest in peace, Kevin Samuels, Joe. And yeah. no man under Kevin Samuels could do what he was doing. So all the Manosphere dudes don't even click their page. None of them have his experience and his wisdom. This is rebel talking. All them other dudes is just talking from today's mathematics. He was bringing 52 law, 62 law. What I consider what I do, 92 law. We still in the 90s with our mind frame. We didn't come into the new age fucking uh, gender bender. <laughs> all this nonsense the cracker put out here, man. They got our white, our, our black women brainwashed from success, right? No black man could tell you nothing. I don't live like that. All my women around me is old school. <clears throat> the man is not in charge. I'm only leading the, the, the pack. My woman can do whatever she wants and give the order also, but it still has to be a, a, a structure to what we do. And since yeah. this is a man's world and everything is in man form, I think I got a little more knowledge about what we should do than my wife. Although I'm one of the men who give my wife all the game I got. So I think men should uh, control their zone more. Because it's not about uh, having a woman under you. No one's enslaved. We're in a fucking war. It's us against them, not us against us. What kind of dumb shit is that? I'm not arguing with my wife over no mundane nothing. We can argue over what happens to us from other races. Our pattern, we have to line it up there. <clears throat> so why reinvent the wheel, my brothers? I got something called the Olympics. Peep this. Olympics. Olympics. <laughs> if anybody hear me talk, 
and you think I'm off, you think you want to battle what I'm saying, put $100 up and let's battle. Because I will put my wife against any girl on the fucking planet when it comes to knowledge, intake, visual of the people, history, beauty, or uh, whatever, the, whatever the categories is. I'm going to put all my money on my wife. Mm. Yeah, you're supposed to. No, that's what I don't want you to say. I'm not supposed to. I think she has smashed the women. That's why I'm betting on her. I'm not betting on her because she's my wife. Crazy. I'll bet on your wife if she was iller than my wife. If I if I just thought that, why wouldn't I bet on Shelly? All I'm saying is, uh, but you you don't, you, you don't know, she, yep. But you don't know Shelly like you know your wife. You know your wife way better than. I know, but they they all trying to do the same thing. Come up to the highest version of themselves, right? So uh, yeah, you would bet on Shelly, and you would feel confident in doing. I, 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 I know my wife uh, with it. You know what I mean? That's what I can say mean. the same thing. You know what I mean? And y'all won like that. Right. They, that's what's missing. With, with right. relationships, they don't become one. Right. You know what I'm saying? Everything I got is hers. Everything she got is mine. Right. We don't divide nothing. Right. I could take, if we only have $100, I could take 75 of it. I don't have to ask. I just have to tell her what I'm using the same right. for. Right. And she could do the same. So there yeah, yeah. no we we don't fight over none of that shit you see on the mm -hmm. internet. There's no power right. shit. Right. We do the power struggle shit. Whoever got the illest yeah, you, mind frame to the problem, we go with we that. Need to go back to that though. Back to that way. But you know what's the problem is? See, they showing all these all the buffoonery on TV and people growing up. You got you got about two generations that grew up on seeing nothing but buffoonery. You know what I mean? And that's a major problem right there. Right, because it's about two generations now. Yeah. Look, they grew up on love hip hop and the rest of that bullshit and Atlanta housewives and all the garbage and trash. Well, our women got weak too. Remember, Cynthia G and them still exist. Right. So they got hurt by a black male. This is simple, yo. A black male cheated on them. A black male uh, had a girl in her bed. A black male played her for some money. I'm talking about a lot of black women. It's something yeah. like that. And now they screaming, all black men ain't shit. Hey, but you know what's funny why you say, say that? Um, going back to like the camp Kevin Samuel. So when we was um, you know at, you know at our feed, you know, being at the, at the church, you know the sister that I you know I do my feed with, they was talking about the Kevin Samuel. So the same thing you said about Cynthia G. You no, know, no, a black man hurt her. That was like a sister hurt Kevin Samuels. That's why he liked that. Oh, that was true too. Yeah. But he tried to clean up the game from his pain, though. So it don't happen to know none of us. And that's the right structure that the white man don't want us to have. Right. Y'all keep, let's not ever let the white, I'm going to put a box in here. From now on, after this show, I'm going to put my other computer on and I'm going to put a picture of a white fucking KKK member. Don't ever live without the white man in the corner of the room. He created right. these thought patterns, or he lets them ask yeah. them. You feel me? So if a black girl get a job and she thinks she better than black men, who told her to think that? Why is it not a black male inheriting a girlfriend or a wife that make 200 grand? Why are you, why are we debating on our own self-worth when we the same race? You should give him 50,000 of your 200 so he could come up. Yeah. And now both of y'all look good. Right. This shit don't make no sense, yo. The white man know I see you. I don't give a fuck what niggas say. I see your bitch ass. But Black Power Bang is in the building. Give a black hand for Black Power Bang up. 
Black motherfucking power. But we just got a lot of work to do, man. We got to love ourselves, man. But yeah, they celebrating his death, man. They don't yeah, that's, that's crazy to me, though, man. That's crazy. There we go. Black How you Africans man. doing? What's up, brother, man? I love y'all Africans. Love you, too. Love you back. Hey, hey. I already know. It's on the agenda. Oh, man, listen. Um, I just I want to catch up with y'all. Oh man, you know shit. Take the flow. You wanted to talk about the radical, the radical measures of unity, man, in our community, man. What's up with that? The radical hey, measures what, of unity. What, what, what made you bring that top of the top topic up? Um, because uh, when we start uh really thinking about where we are and what we're up against, it's going to take radical measures. Malcolm X said that uh, revolution is bloody, right? Right. And a lot of time when we hear that, we think that first and foremost, we think it's automatically physical warfare. Uh, it don't necessarily, when he put said it, he said it in context, he's the one to let people know to the fullest extent that bloodshed, it will be shed. But revolution also, without bloodshed, could mean feelings are hurt. Revolution is also um, that what you want it is not going to happen. Like, for example, um, Black Power Bang, and I want it. Crips and Bloods to be together. You know what I mean? That wasn't that wasn't it. You feel me? But um, even right now, today, I'm still trying. I'm kind of like I was just on the phone with a Palmer Block Crip. And if anybody know anything about L.A. gangbanging, the first Crips that was killing each other was the Six O's and um, the A-Trey Gangsters. A-Trey Gangsters, the, yeah. Yeah, in a second. I read that book, Monster Cody. Yeah. I read that book when it first came out in the early 90s. Yeah, and the second neighborhood was my neighborhood, Southside and Palmer Block. And Compton it was the first Crip on Crip Beef. And uh, I was on the phone with a Palmer Block the other day, you know. And uh, and it all started from me adding them on uh, social media. And he said, I know you from Southside. And he said, uh, but I see you when you're grown man, and that's why I'm going to add you. And we started talking in the back lines to where he, we didn't exchange phone numbers to where he didn't touch out reached out to sisters that, that was lit from Compton and moved out here and he seen what I'm doing and he connected me with a sister that, that could utilize my skills and, and it's, it's things like that, right? But it still took a radical thought for me to go against everything that I knew to be right. You know what I mean? Um, I have also put up a post, not to be long-winded, that uh, we got to let the dead homies lie, live, I mean, we got to let the dead homies die so the little homies can live. That's right. I don't know and, for a second, Black Power. Go ahead. Go ahead. And, uh, he said he, uh, Dion said he didn't get the email. Uh, G3 right fashion. I'm going to send it off another. Uh, keep talking, Banger. Okay. I'm gonna send it off another. All right. Yeah, so, and with that mindset, that just that alone, and this is, we think about these radical thoughts. It's all in context of Wherever, wherever we at on the chessboard. So if we can start to push that thought through the Vysaurus, GDs, the Crips, to the Bloods, let the dead homies die so the little homies can live. So that means that that war that we had because of a homie getting killed by this particular gang, let's start right here. Let that go and focus on the little homies. Now we focusing on the future instead of the past. Since we living in the past, we have no future. You know, when we're not moving towards the future. Even um, with us, like uh, us being RBG, Mal uh, Amos and Wilson said that we got to be able to sit down, not just for an hour or two. We got to be able to sit down for weeks on end, pick one topic, one thing, and, and work on that and work our thoughts around that one thing till we solve that problem. You know what I mean? And we so busy solving white folks' problems. That's what he said. We solve white folks' problems. We don't solve ours. So when we look at white supremacy and the way they got us, they got our backs to the wall and we can look at it if we put it in the context of football, right? They don't, they, they'll say, and let's say all the different countries are football teams and they'll be like, okay, well, we're going to organize this and it's going to be the NFL. Everybody can be part of the NFL. People be like, you know what? That sounds good. Well, we're going to have rules in the way we play against each other and that everything will be working out fine. But then they'll do some things like get all the, 
the physical therapist. They, they got the physical therapist, but we got to use these physical therapists. Or, and then they'll have some females to, to, to say the cheerleaders are just prostitutes. So when they hire guys, oh, you didn't make it to the NFL? Well, we could put you on this team, but you got to be willing to throw a game when we tell you to. We got you on a team. And then you will get a bonus. These are the, They put people in place. And these people are wearing our jerseys. So in order for us to beat that, we're going to need radical mindsets, and really we need fanatics. And, and that I'm going to stop right there on fanatics. What do y'all think about us needing fanatics for the situation that we're in? What's the definition of fanatics? Um, well, let's, I'm going to read the exact definition. But it's a person with a strong belief in a thought or a political stance. Fanatic. Hold on. Fanatic definition. Yeah. Fanatic definition. It says, there we go. A person filled with excessive and single-minded zeal, especially for extreme religious or political cause. Or a football team. Yeah, I think we need fanatics. I think we're fanatics to the cause. Right. So do we need right. more of us? Because the word fanatic <laughs> make it look like we might go do like suicide bombing. But what's the real fanatic? So I, now, now let's take let's let's go with the suicide bombing. Right. The truth is, we need suicide packs, and suicide packs is to where you go pick people in your family that if 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 they done wrong, then we gonna we gonna do what it takes to avenge that. But then we have to tailor that. For example, there's a sister that was shot five times for nothing, unarmed. If now who's going to go for her? It has to be an immediate reaction to things of that nature. It, it, it's, it's just true. So the thing is, um, in order for it to stop, and it's not we 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 in a situation to where we can't strike first. But if I'm in the car, I'm I'm gonna keep one hundred for my my queen and my sons. I'm in the car. Ain't gonna be no them getting hit over the head. It's not gonna happen. It's an immediate reaction. But we can't go out and be that way for everybody. So that's why the, it's set in place for live, kill, die. Every black man have to be willing to live, kill, die for his black woman and child and, and, and be fanatical about suicide bombing about his family. So that's why we have to put men back in the household. You feel me? And, in, in, and for us, we have to also respect his household. The mindset of a rapper talking about, oh, I'll fuck your bitch. We got to be against that. That cannot be something that's perpetuated within our community. So we have to better, we have to really start putting down force. We got to grow strong enough to be able to put enough muscle on rappers not to put that kind of message out. You feel me? And I mean, that, that's where the fanaticism, fanaticism will really have to start to grow first. So it's a war. The first war that we have to wage is inward. You know what I mean? It's gain, us gain control of ourselves us gain control of our homes, us gain control of our land. We have to start utilizing, we gotta get, like, we have to be fanatics about growing our own food. Like, I'm not gonna eat a tomato unless I grow it, unless I get it from one of the brothers and sisters. Right. It, it, it's, it's, it's simple, it's not even the way out, it's simple things. It, I got, we gotta get to the point to where I'm not gonna wear, what, since there's a brother and sister that's creating underwear, I'm not wearing no underwear. I'm only wearing those. We have to get to that point. Now, let me ask you this. Why, why Jewish people don't get caught in many scandals? Because they keep it in-house. Now, let, let's go back to the football scenario. Football player evidently must didn't do something. All of a sudden, rape charges pop up. Nobody don't. We got to understand that these people are operatives. Look at Cosby. All these women with all these charges, everybody pointing at him like he's guilty. 
but all their stories fell apart. All of them. These people, the, the people that we're playing against are fanatics. Look, Rome, Rome wouldn't get built without Roman fanatics. The Ottoman Empire needed Ottoman fanatics to become the Ottoman Empire. Now, the United States of America build fanatics. They're called Marines. They're called Navy. I'm willing to die for my country. That's a fanatic. And the thing, every time we get a system, the Black Panther Party was a party that could reproduce these fanatics that's fanatic about, that had a fanaticism about building the people and the liberation of the people. They destroy it. So they destroy everything that we build to reproduce a certain mindset, even if it don't directly affect them. But now check this, because it does directly affect them. Now let's let's go to let's go broad, right? It's easier to see sometimes if you look at countries. The United States of America, um, China, and the, like different countries, they have the power. Well, I don't know if it's in China's best interest, but uh, let's say South Korea and North Korea, they were split apart. But it's not in the U.S. interest, and I believe the U.S. got bases over there, but it's not in the U.S. interest to see that they merge back together as one. If they do, then why would they need U.S. Not US bases? We don't need you to help us anymore. It's not in U.S. interest that Japan and China become allies because they lose total control of the South China Sea. They might not be able to bring their Navy over into that part of the world. It's just like it's in the, the police department interest that we constantly sell dope and fight each other. Because if we if we ever get to the point to where we're policing our own community, why do we need them? That so the divide and conquer is necessary. So it, we have to be we have to develop a fanaticism about everybody working towards us building together. And if they not, if they if they're you if they can't be used for the building of the community, they're useless. Like right now, my my children, my my wife, my mother, my my brothers, sisters, my family, if they're operating against it, like all right, let's back up. The Crips, the Crips, growing up in the Crips, and the, and the Bloods pretty much had the same thing. That it was a saying that we said that nobody's bigger than the program. So, which means is that if I do something that's against the hood, I'm gonna get DP, which is a discipline. I end up on the on the app or, or at the park. I'm getting punched on because I'm not bigger than the program. I can't run. But I have to stay within the program, and it's and we have to get to we have to have a fanaticism like that to where we are not bigger than the program. We have to stay within a certain program to develop a certain culture. And what the Crips did when they had that in the Bloods, they had nobody bigger than the program, willing to take a uh, force on their own. Look what happened. They spread coast to coast. Also with the help because with the with certain operatives. And um, because it's a it's a it's a system of us destroying each other, they help help it spread. And they they shut down the spread of the Panthers. We understand that, but just the fact that they was able to spread. So now we have to develop a mindset to overthrow these neighborhoods and, and turn them RBG. And that, I mean, and it's going to take a fanaticism to do it because they have to see that you more for this than they are for that. That's why I like what 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 would be the steps that we have to take to what you're talking about? All right, I put some out there. All right, all right. So let's uh let's go back to the U.S. Um, uh, the dollar. The dollar right now is um pretty much it would have been dead a long time ago. What they did in order for the dollar to re regain power is they pegged it to oil, right? And it became the petrodollar. 
So they went to these other countries, organized them, and like, look, you sell it in this, and we'll give you this. So they just they found a, a particular thing. And if you uh, watch, like, I've been studying the Zulus, you know, if you go watch the movie, Zulu, man, this movie, like, we would have to really watch this movie again and sit down and, and really break down. It's so much science in that movie. They start off with the death of empire. But one thing that they said is that they want to destroy their economy. We have to start to build ways to bring our economy intact and to employ our own. We have to get, if we're the fanatics, we have to get to a point to where we're working towards making money and working with each other. The fanatics have to make money and be around each other and start to work out any little problem that we have. So until we actually start working together, live in proximity of each other, it's, it's not, it's going to be, still be weakened. You feel me? Like the Marines, the Marines got a headquarters where they build more Marines, you go there, you become one, then they got bases where they go. Same so, thing. See, that'd be a hard task to even get it started. It could be done. But right. now, it ain't gonna be easy. I can tell you that. Now, check this it's not a hard task because we have vehicles, we have plenty of vehicles out there. So, right. for example, one, you know, and even if we don't live in proximity, then we get a clubhouse. They got right. other people, they got we got situations, motorcycle clubs do it. They had like you can go on YouTube and look at these motorcycle clubs, like right now. I'm joining a motorcycle club and we bought the ride to Cincinnati with the other chapters. And there's a chapter meeting between every chapter within this motorcycle club. We go into a meeting. Now we ride state to state. So we have vehicles to make it happen. We just need to resolve and we need that. We need that fanaticism. You feel me? Hell, Crips and Bloods did it. When they, they they lived in the hood, or if they wasn't in the hood, they came to the hood, but they had a, a, a we called it a hood house. They had a hood house where you could go sleep there if you want, get something to eat there if you want. So we could pick a neighborhood, right? And we did, would decide that, okay, well, we're going to get this house in this neighborhood. We could pick any neighborhood in Atlanta, anyone. Get a house in that neighborhood, put the flags out there, decorate make that yard beautiful as a motherfucker start getting a young man around there helping them make money by offering um lawn care to the neighborhood and now now these young men are getting money and the neighborhood's getting beautified all because we are in that neighborhood it could be something that's up but it, it takes it's going to take finances to better get the house to rent the house or buy the house even if we buy a dilapidated house we fix it up and even if we fixing it up, we can teach the young man how to fix it up. Now they learn in construction. But it's going to take us to be able to, and I, I think really if we go to the trades, I think the trades would be the easiest route because it's, it's something that we could get the information and we could reduplicate that information and make immediate in income off of it to where our door won't get kicked in. Like what you say. I like that idea. We all we all blow what two hundred dollars a month. Two, four, six, eight, ten. That's a G right here. Right. He's right. To rent a house. Right. You know, oh, I didn't see the other brother here. Right. But I like the so. Uh, uh, what now, now, now. Go ahead. No, no, you got it. I wait. I was gonna say. Now, and now, this is the this is the power of the time that we are in now, right? If we, especially if we study the moves, all we have to do is really study the moves, like what, right? Like Malcolm and Martin. Two different mindsets. One of them was actually building. One of them was unified. Malcolm was an organizer. He organized things. You know what I mean? And they, they well, I read, uh, was it a book? I think it was 
like 500 members of the um, N- NOI. Yeah, it was 500 Islam, before he got there. Before he got there. Yeah. 10,000 by the end of his life. So if we just study that and study him, how did you go from 500 to 10,000? And we had just look at our society. And we just talked to p- the people going to tell you everybody's crying out for something right now. And they really want to see men, actual men. Look, all right, and check this. We, can, we don't have to even spend money in clothing and being fancy. A, a Batman. Batman is famous. He wear one outfit. We spending too much money in these outfits trying to look fly. Superman, famous. And when people see Superman, they want to see him in that outfit. So basically what we do, we find our outfit and we go be these characters. And these children see these characters. Same thing that happened to the Crips. The Crips wore dicky suits, T-shirts and dickies. That was a daily attire of a gang member. Blue. They didn't, it was, it, they, nobody even know what they was wearing. It was just that they wore blue and they wore red. It's, it's simple. Everything that grows starts to where the poor could duplicate it. So we pick a simple uniform. So when they see us, we're identifiable. They said Islam did it as well. They with the suits um, and a, a tray. Now, check this. The RBG. Because right now, what I'm thinking about is something else. I'd rather talk about this offline. But the RBG. If the RBG start go go and learn how to fix become motorcycle mechanics if y'all ever got time next well i won't I'll, next wednesday come out to ellenwood at pseudos as a matter of fact i show i, I show it i think i got it right here if you if you go to ellenwood at pseudos on wednesday night you'll see how many black folks are out there on these motorcycles and taking them somewhere else to get fixed. We're not doing it ourselves. And if we, if we could harness that money and become these mechanics to where it come to us, that's a whole industry right there by itself. I don't even have it on here. That's a whole industry. Um, we just, a sister, we just bought a house, a condo in we get a call. We go to our house. It, it brand new. She moving in. Different paint spots. She not satisfied with inside the house. So now she ready to put more money down to get the whole house painted. We have people that want this stuff done. We just don't have the man. Freedom Georgia. Freedom Georgia popping, ain't it? Where's our construction team? So right now, if we start building a construction team and the mechanics. Uh, another another thing is industrial maintenance. If we start sending men to school for industrial maintenance, industrial maintenance, you learn pneumatics, you learn hydraulics, you learn electrical, you learn simple machinery, and even hell, the complex machinery, pulleys, levers, gears. Just that's industrial maintenance, uh, industrial refrigeration, industrial electrical. Once you get that, man, it's nothing we can't do in, in framing. Once you get the basics of framing and architecture, man, we are on. We could duplicate, we could build and go to every other place and build the same thing. I told you that was I like what you said. Yeah, I, ain't, I mean, I don't want. I don't got too much to say, like, online. Like, we need to talk offline, but uh, we're looking at some – a lot of the similar things that you're talking about as far as uh, acquiring property um, and being able to um, upkeep the property, renovate, uh, landscape, and things like that. But I definitely agree with everything that you're saying. Yeah, you know, it, that that's the thing. Uh, the online – the online, and that was going to mention online as well. As we work it, it's crazy because we're in the catch-22. It's like you don't want to show your hand, 
but it's best if you do. Because showing your hand, uh, show everybody what you're doing, and when it's attacked, then people will be wondering, they was doing something good, why was they attacked? True. So we know we under constant attack. For example, Black Lives Matter. No, all lives matter. That was an actual attack. And then when it came to, well, they didn't really slow down the steam of Black Lives Matter with the All Lives Matter, and it catch it didn't catch on. It just really fueled Black Lives Matter more. Like, look, you can't even say that we matter, and it is not saying that you don't. So it fueled them. So what was the next tactic they came out with after All Lives Matter didn't work? Blue Lives Matter. Yeah, they did that, and now the police try to be like, we matter too. And that didn't work. That only fueled Black Lives Matter. What was it? Yeah, I don't know. Another marginal group. Stop Asian hate. Ah. Oh yeah, yeah. Sure, so you right. But now that, check but this. That, but, but that, but that was a little bit. That was a little bit after. Um, kind of like I want. I would say it was kind of like um, during the time when Black Lives Matter kind of was like like um, like dying down. Hmm. <laughs> but could you say, I mean, I, I, you could argue that that's part of what derailed Black Lives Matter at the same time, took it away from uh, mainstream attention. Was uh, it, it, it did took the pop away. You're right. The yeah, Asian, yeah, you know, yeah, Asians yeah, acquiring yeah, their rights and not even really, you know, I, I guess it was because of the pandemic. You know, they had their moment during the pandemic. You know? Yeah. Oh, the thing is, they into destroying. Destroying uh, totally. Now check this: they took a marginalized group. Stop Asian hate. Where was the stop all hate at? That's real. Never, you never saw that. You never see anything contrary to that. That's how you know it's them. Man, we are under constant attack and constant bombardment, and people like <laughs> they take this lightly, man. We are under constant suppression. And, but they got so good with it. it even if we go back to um, the football analogy, they got so good with it to where they really could decide what team win and what team don't. They know they, they, play, they play the game to where it's – and then this is our problem. Our problem uh, uh, – Dick Gregory has said, and when he said this, it stuck with me. He said, I want to apologize to white people because black people are mad at the wrong white people. He said, they're mad at the white people that couldn't change your life if they wanted to. Right. And that makes sense. So, and I watch a lot of brothers that come into this black power movement and they think it's just, just everybody white and a cracker, the cracker. And look, homie, they you know what that's like. That's like being at a football game tackling somebody in the stands with a football jersey on. You would never yeah. score no points. You got to stay on the field. We got to look at the focused. players. Yeah, that's like, what... We ain't focused. We, yeah. all, we all in the stands. Like, come on, homie. Let them stay in the stands. We, that, that ain't even the game. So now we got to try to organize a group. Like, look, we got to be on the field. We 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 are focused be falling. Deep. But this is beautiful though. It is beautiful. We working and it's the work. The work is the work is out there. Yes, man. Huh? You clean the kitchen? Uh-huh. Good job. You so what you do? Every, you said Friday. Um, oh, oh, you. Well, all right, I got you. I'm gonna pay you. Hold on, let me see. Yeah, I gotta pay. You. How many times you clean the kitchen? Brother, drop us some real information. Okay. Yeah. Got an army. I couldn't hear you, Rebel. No, you hey, uh, but the real white man. The real white man. Niggas just scared the bang on them. Say that again, Rebel. You're right. Niggas just scared the bang on the real white man. So it's fuck all white people. 
But it's not fuck YouTube. It's not fuck the government. It's not fuck whoever made Instagram. It's not whoever, you know, programs the music on the radios or or the videos. The real white man who really put this shit together. Who who created the GMO food? Who got the medicine giving us the placebos and all that? They scared of the real white man. He, he's that's the real boogeyman. It's easy to say fuck Bill at the gas station. But if you put your life together to bang on the real white man, they scared to do that. One thing, like knowing our people, um, I took my fight off of the government. We can't we gotta leave them where they at. Our people is not ready. <laughs> <laughs> If the gov- if the United States government fall right now, the black community would just go into shambles. We are, you know how many of our people we would have to annihilate just to get control of it? Maybe that's what's supposed to happen. <laughs> hey, hey, look, now I fight a war for black against black to get black back black. Yes, sir. Right? And that's my focus fighting a war for black against black to get black back black if we can get us on track and that, that's it it's like i'm not mad at coaches i'm not mad at the nfl i'm like i'm upset like why aren't we organized uh, a lot of us and i use football and analogies because people can understand that and if we use more football analogies right when we when we explaining this black power when they watching football and these men in tight pants chase balls, then maybe they could be thinking about some revolutionary shit while they watching this game. But we so wrapped up in games that we're not on real things. I remember I coming up in Compton when every, when a football uh, Super Bowl was on, man, it was popping. I couldn't wait to ride through Long Beach and they were throwing a Super Bowl party. I was breaking in all they cars still on the radio. Because they couldn't hear. They got the TV up loud. Everybody in there yelling. The alarms would be going off. Man, I'm 15, 14, 15, 16. I'm getting them. I'm making money after that. I was buying new shoes. So while they worried about the games, I was I, – so I never got into watching football. Because that was, that was where my mind was when the Super Bowl season came up. You know what I mean? And, I, and now, as a revolutionary – Super Bowl season coming up, and man, to stop the revolution, like, hold on, the game about to come on. I'm like, the game about to come on. Fuck that game. Like, we, we out, man. So, and that's that fanaticism. Like, and like you said, so it's really the, 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 the spoils that colonialism has brought. A lot of us ain't willing to let that go. Yeah, it, it's it's the spoils, but I, I was I, that's why I be telling brothers, man, we have to learn how to master ourselves, man. And um, and what's so crazy, and it's in every esoteric book dealing with the mind, you dealing with your thoughts, dealing with your habits. Because if you don't control your habits, they're gonna put some out here that's go that will control your habits. That's why the media, you know, the TV and stuff like that created. Because if you don't, if you don't control your thoughts, and we get unified and be like, okay, we on the revolution, so we're finna do revolutionary things, then somebody be like, hey man, uh, the Falcons on, be like the Falcons, that that should be a complete violation for real, because we shouldn't be concerned about no Falcons, man. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. But 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 that comes that comes in tell because we don't we don't master ourselves, man. Now know thyself, do for self, have knowledge of self. When you don't master yourself. Uh, the media, any all this stuff out here in the public, out here in commerce, masters you, and it and it gives you no reward. They ain't giving us no reward, man. Well, you get you get rewarded more for doing something stupid than you do for doing than you do good. You, you're not gonna get no reward if you are. Why is that? To, if you are here trying to, that's 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 how, that's how the that's how the black man was trained. We was trained to hate ourselves. And we was also trying to do stupid stuff. And we get rewarded, point blank. Right now, I could take it back to hip hop. Higher infinite power healing our people. Uh, and then, so if we higher infinite power, we healing our people. That wasn't no reward in that. That that era didn't last that long. Then them other people step in and they start um, 
pleasurizing hip hop and then making it bad. Well, nobody um rapping about uh not eating chicken, beef, pork, ham, spam, and all that crap. They was talking about some bitch hole sluts and man and, and shake shake what your mama gave you. That then you got rewarded for that. That's when the money started going up. But when it was conscious, when no money going up, you have to really put that. You have to really be real smart and strategic to really make make your money. You know what I'm saying? Now you could put out a a, a trap beat, a drum beat. And you you ain't got to say five words. It can be ad libs. You getting paid. They reward you for that. You know what I'm saying? That's why we got to be bigger, smarter than that. You know, and we got to move different. And we definitely got to do business. The only weapon a black man have right now is doing business. We have to do it collectively, and we have to do it in a way where we unify together. I do like. The idea you gave of the motorcycle club, because I looked at that because my uh while I was there before my old shop, it was right next to a motorcycle club. The only thing I did not like about the motorcycle people was too much male uh to testosterone. When they really have an event, they block off the lot and everybody just barking at each other, you know. And you know, they be packing too, they be having a lot of guns on them too, though. But I I know there'd be a difference if we do it the way that we um that we that we are learn how to do it when we being revolutionary with it. It won't be like that. But the concept is still there though. They do have clubs everywhere. I talked to my brother, he in a motorcycle club, he in the uh, east side. They finna drive somewhere. I mean, they finna ride somewhere and have a meeting. Then they be having dances and they be having uh, meetings with uh with other groups and stuff like that. And believe it or not, man, the motorcycle clubs are starting to uh unify. Clubs are starting to unify. You know what I'm saying? You know, so yeah, that, that concept there, man. But we, we do get rewarded. I'm joining the Zulus. Huh? You heard you heard of the Zulus? No, nah, I, I ain't heard of the Zulu. Yeah. The Zulus. And this this out that's why I got that brother Kid Wardo. You know what I mean? That uh, try to cause this is the thing. I, my my whole thing was first I was I was looking up a different one that was they was red black and green, and I was like man I, I'm with that I want I want to find it. When the Zulus part of Zulus you have to study Zulu history, and it's African centered. So I'm thinking to myself, well, how can we get the RBG like this is the Zulu, and build the RBG around the Zulu. To where the the African culture it just it, it recycles itself through it, you know what I mean? So you have the motorcycle set to where other motorcycle clubs come because there's a lot of motorcycle clubs that's red, black, and green. They had like Great Kings of Africa. They had Afro dogs that's red, black, and green. And you got some they they wearing the African patches. So when they come, they know that they getting. Some, some spiritual, some it's some healing. Like when they come to this particular one, it's something about it. It heals its soul. Uh, yes. You gotta pay me for soccer. Oh what? You gotta pay me for soccer. Soccer. Mm -hmm. We go. We go talk about that. Let me finish this. Okay. okay. So, and that that's one of the things to try to connect, connect different. Like, like even with Crips and Bloods, that's what how Black Power banging started. Like trying to connect Crips and Bloods banging to Black Power, you know what I mean? And that was the whole thing. So I dressed up in all black, like the Black Panthers, and had on blue and red chucks. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was jumping out different hoods. So it was trying to connect it. If we take these unlikely groups, Crips and Bloods, Vice Lords GDs, the gangs, the gangs got guns, RBGs got guns. Motorcycle club got guns. All we have to do is organize our guns. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's it's like it's it's simple, but that's the hard thing, and that's where our brain work. They all need to be connected to the UNIA. They all need to come citizens of the Republic of New Africa, especially down here. You know what I mean? So so, and this is something that, like the UNIA and the Republic of New Africa, are are two groups that's that's like it's not one or the other it's it's something that's neutral so if we actually put into these groups 
and have this neutral group and, and spread this neutral group across the different bike sets, across the different gangs, across the different, you know what I mean? Now we have a unifying factor. So that, that's it. And then, then we been able to organize. And there's people in every gang, in every motorcycle set, in every club, in the Republic of New Africa, they have a skill. Now we have to, well, hell, we could just create the organization that organized the skills. Every uh, all the accountants, put them all on this list. All the all the plumbers, all on this list. You need a plumber? Well, we go go through the list. Call us. Just that, we own. But we are gonna take the sisters to do that because I'm, not, I could promote it. <laughs> I, I don't get, I don't keep good track of stuff. <laughs> no, that would be dope if we had a Black Power app where you can fill your needs with somebody directly. In, in the mission. In your area. Yeah, in your area. Put that down, Black Power app. Let's see if we can. You feel me? Works. And look, check this. And, oh, we're going to talk about the rest of it offline on how, because they might snatch it. But, but yeah, I mean, it, and it, it's like, like buy black. Buy black is there. So, what if we just, uh, uh, like, instead of trying to recreate it, we enhance by black. Find the people that's doing by black, and we expand on by black. Don't we know them brothers? Yeah, we know. Yeah. Pretty cool. So, black I mean, two of them. They pretty cool. They by black. They by black. They got a whole website, man. A whole web. So let's build. Let's, let's, let's find them. Uh, Black owned businesses, man. We gotta move. Uh, in my mind, we gotta move from black business to black economy, though. Um, right. Black businesses are, you know, black individuals that provide products and services, you know, to the community. But a black economy is one that, you know, that black business is is sourcing its products from a black manufacturer. You know, so once we start to get into uh, uh, factory industry, you know, in production, um, producing, you know, and, and, and uh, uh, refining raw products, you know, that's when we get into economy. And, and that's what I look forward to see beyond, you know, the, the, the surface level of black business, because if we're not providing the raw resources, then on the back end, somebody else is still making money off of these black businesses. <laughs> That's right, right. That's, I like that's, that. That's yeah, I like that. That's real smart. I was looking at, I was actually looking into that last month. Like, what can we buy to control? It seems like the market is pretty tight for us export import, unless unless we deal directly with someone out of Haiti, or deal with somebody directly out of Africa, and we start importing our own goods and like he said making our own products you know that then that way it, 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 we will be definitely creating our own economy because everything could be definitely be done by us but it, yeah hard growth i looked into that man you know the market is really tight for us export import man and if they find out you know that we moving certain um materials or whatever then you know i i found out too um the um they go to these uh shipyards yeah yeah, these shipyards be that they'll, they'll put a tax on you. That's yes. another thing, too. See, we, we would definitely have to um man, that 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 I wrote it down. That entails us finding the product, finding the raw materials, making a product from the materials, and not going through a shipyard to get it here. That means we would have to buy a boat or something like that to make it real successful because once we start moving more materials do you know the shipyards charge you a tax you know what i'm saying it's yes, up, to and, them, up to their discretion and that's the thing like because because uh black power brought it up and we we talk about it sometimes but how comfortable uh black people are in the society and yeah, financially sure. that's something that we are we whoo, we really don't realize you know how cheap things are you know here in america uh, and how cheap this system has made things, you know, being able to go to the store, get your milk, 
your bread, your, your cheeses, and things like that. Convenient. These are luxuries uh, in, in other nations. But what I'm talking about, it is a level of sacrifice involved in, you know, because up front, no, it's, it's not going to be as competitive financially as, uh, you know, the Kroger or something like that. Um, it is going to cost us more. And it does. It is like that in black business. It costs us more to support, you know, some of these black businesses as opposed to, you know, just going to the dollar store to get the, 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 a similar product. Um, but that's an investment and a sacrifice that we have to be willing to make. You know. So one way we could do it. Right. So let's just say here again, we get a house in, in one of these black neighborhoods, preferably one with a lot of older people on the streets. That mean that we're going to have to have an intelligence agency, intelligence group or however we want to um, word it. That's going to go out and find this street. And and also one with a lot of children in it. And we do a block party. We try to utilize the backyards to be able to grow things. And then we have like a, a certain festival to where if we have eggs, if we have tomatoes, we only eat and cook the abundance of things that we grow, the things that we raise. If we start to do that, like, and then like we go throughout Georgia, there's a brother over here that got cows. Then we go get a whole, and that's, this is what I'm trying, this is an idea I'm trying to push to the Zulu MC. Nobody bit to, bit on it. So, but if I could go to the RBG, and we could get this going. Then when it comes to the Zulu MC, when after it happened, everybody go take pictures of it and see it. We 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 grill a, a damn near a whole cow. We got a whole cow. People still eat me. I eat me. Uh, some of y'all don't eat me. Or a whole goat. So the thing is now that people see it, because this is things that people haven't seen. We got an abundance of fruits and vegetables that's out there. And when people come, they can actually just they 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 feast like we have we we develop a, a name for it in a feast. Once you have this feast, and then you let them know that so and so grew this, so and so grew this. If y'all want this, get it from here. This feast will, will start to it 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 it'll develop some. It, that's the culture. The culture is like the brother said. Some um, knowledge has said some. You had said something earlier about the, our minds. Our minds is controlled by culture. Like even with the Zulu, the, you wasn't a Zulu because you was born a Zulu. You were Zulu because you went through the rites of passage. And a lot of African cultures have rites of passage. In order for us to really gain control, we should have to, we, we still need to rebuild the rites of passage. We do. And in the rites of passage, the man, everybody talking about start with the kids. We can't start with the kids because the kids ain't going to lead the adults. So we have to start with us they have a rites of passage, that'll kind of get them all in line. But we have to start getting these businesses ready for the children that's coming through this rites of passage. So after they get it, bam, you could now, you could run this, you could run this, and we go into the next thing. But if we develop the group, and we like, we just say the UNIA, we build the UNIA, and out of UNIA, we put the money in and say, well, we're we going to send so-and-so, 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 to school mo motorcycles classes. It's nine months, it's a nine month course. They got them in Florida, they got them in Arizona. And so that means that we're gonna have to be able to fund food. We're gonna have to be able to fund apartment. We're gonna have to be able to uh, all, and then we don't have to worry about the school. The schooling, let's say uh let's say that they are be able to, to pretty much they going to pay for their own loans back, right? So and buy them paying for their own loans back that means that they're going to actually have to work it and depend on their trade. But what we're going to do is we're going to be able to provide a facility that's headquarters, but we keep a, a portion of it for them to be able to come and do their thing here. So that way we be able to retain and we don't have a brain drain. So there, if, if we could just start to map this thing out and, and do it like when it comes to the drywall, the electrical, the air conditioning. I get in there and do it myself if nobody else want to help. And if we do get some people, like hell, we got all these homeless guys out here. Man, if, if we can go pick up some, I go pick these brothers up myself. That way, I'll be able to pay them for utilizing their work, their their body, and their energy, and they 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 pull back into the community. 
to, even with them, we have to find a way to pull them back into the community. But because we don't have community, our people are falling to the wayside. So it's really, we just have to rebuild a culture. And we can get all this done and get that black economy popping. You hit it right on in there. We just have to rebuild the cu- our culture again. We're around that. Man, right. our culture took some hits. Look, look not, not, not to cut you off, brother, but a, a brother from the motherland said, "You're the first one I heard say admit to being African." What, homie? Do you not understand that the Pan African movement is the, the largest movement in the U.S.? Matter of fact, the Pan African movement in the U.S. is larger than the Pan African movement in Africa. It is. Because a lot and of people brand- in Africa, a lot of people in Africa, um, they still stuck on Jesus. Oh, <laughs> man! Can oh, we man. go there? Yeah, Bevel has man. said that before the show started. Stuck yeah. on Jesus and Allah. I'm, 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 I'm at two brothers online. I'm, I'm, make, I'm making them some T-shirts. They doing African Kemet T-shirts. But he was saying, you know, before before I start, he want to pray with me. I say, I said, how you praying? I said, brother, I don't do that type of prayer. You know, he he still he still did the invoice with me for the shirts, but yeah, he was talking about in the mighty name of Jesus. I said, ho, 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 brother, wait a minute, hold up, hold up, wait, a minute, brother. This was like two days ago. I'm like, brother, hold up, hold up, brother, hold up, hold up. I don't do that. He's talking about what can, you can believe I, in. Can I he, ask you real quick a quick go strategy? Ahead. Um, so. It's kind of it's kind of better if you let them pray and then give them something, right? Because uh, China work off that strategy, give them take. So people do the, all the Jesus thing, right? I asked them five questions. This is five questions that normally destroy Christians. And if they answer no in the first couple of questions, their mind is open. You can get them. If they answer pretty much yes to all the questions and no to the last one then you pretty much got them it's um it's god perfect everything god do is perfect everything god create perfect and then they normally answer yes to all those questions then you ask them are you perfect then they say no then i ask them were you created by God? And they'd be like, yes. I'd be like, you don't see a contradiction in your belief? So I'm going to go through that again. Is God perfect? Yes. Everything God do is perfect? Yes. Everything God create is perfect? Yes. Are you perfect? No. Were you created by God? Yes. They normally stop and, and think about it. And then I try to explain to them Christianity and colonialism and how it was spreading, Right? For example, you know Adam and Eve didn't sin? Yes, they did. No, they didn't. Yes, they did. Grab your Bible. Show me where it says Adam and Eve sinned. Only thing it says that they disobeyed. And then the punishments, God set the punishment for that. The first time sin popped up in the Bible was after Cain killed Abel, and it says sin would be crouching at your doorstep. That's after he put the mark on his head and all that. So Thanks. sin wasn't even there. So, and then once you start saying this to him, and then not only that, Eve wasn't created from the rib of Adam. Man and woman was created at the same time. No, they wasn't. Go read. What was, what was done on the sixth day? Everything was created in six days on the seventh day rest. Nothing was created after the seventh day. So it's just the beginning. At, at the beginning, they can't even get past that. And until they can get past that, you kind of got them. Now they coming back. Now they want to hear more of what you got to say. So sometimes you got to let them go into it. You know what I mean? The hug them like, yeah, brother, yeah, Jesus. Okay. So do you know the letter, Jay? Let them get close to you, brother. Let them get close. I wasn't really feeling it, man. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the brother's like, hey, that's that Gary Baker. Like, hold on, Jesus. How did you say, Jesus? <laughs> man, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> and the guy, the guy had a deep voice. He's like, "The mother, name of Jesus." <laughs> oh man, hey, it's funny. Hey, you know what? When they say 
Jesus could, could come back and save us, right? And then they be like, oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm like, why did you say thank you, Jesus? Because Jesus blessed me with this. Okay, so is Jesus back or is Jesus coming back? Because if you think of Jesus, evidently Jesus must be back. Which one is it? They don't know. And then to say that Jesus is going to come down and save us, save us from who and what? What danger are we in that we need to be saved from? You know what I mean? So it's now, so now they just want to be saved, man. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Save a Ho. <laughs> hey, the only thing we need to be saved from is white supremacy. Right. That's what's text. Right. And, 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 and I don't know. I think Jesus is down with white supremacy. That's right. He is. Right. <laughs> Man, yeah, I have so much fun with Christians. It was one sister. I was at work. And um, I was like, oh, something, something about a Bible. One brother, I had a Bible in my car. He goes to the parking lot, he get his Bible. We in the mechanic shop. And I start going through the Bible with her. She closed it, pushed it away from her, and said, I'm going to stop listening to you. Uh-uh. We ain't going to have this conversation no more because she felt like she was going against her faith. If you look up a hundred contradictions, I think it's like a hundred and one contradictions in the Bible. And it say, um, who told David to count the fighting men of Israel? Man, I bullshit you not. You will fuck these the Christians get fucked over by that. One of them say in, in Samuel, it'll be like God. But then in like Corinthians, it'll say Satan. So I, then I ask them, well, is God and Satan the same person? Well, uh, hold on. I got I to ask my preacher about this. Then I, I, you, there's so many contradictions. And one of them is say that they was going to be uh, um, punished with three years of famine. Then that same story is in another book, says seven years of famine. But if you go with the New Living Testament, they corrected it. But then when you go to the King James Version, it, there's no corrections. So now then I show, I take these two Bibles and I bring them together and be like, well, how is this Bible different? Which Bible is right? Now I got two Bibles. I, I, I did that one time, not to cut you off. And no, the, no, ladies, ahead, the, la the lady said, um, you need a spirit filled Bible. A spirit? Spirit filled Bible. She had one. But everybody know that the uh, Bibles are just uh, stories and, and uh, metaphors. The allegory, yeah. That's how the Bible is. Metaphors and just stories. That's it. I mean, you can't really believe somebody walking on water, right? Now, this now let's get back to the fanatic in the Bible since we're on this conversation. I personally think that the people that believe in Jesus, we shouldn't tell them that Jesus is fake. We should tell them that Jesus is real. We get a brother, we get a brother, we send him to school to become a preacher, and we overthrow the church. We put him in the church, and we could do whatever we want with the collection money. Jesus said we need to buy an apartment. Jesus said we need a farm. And if these Negro, if you got to tell them Jesus said to be revolutionary, hey, I'm with it. I'm I'm not into trying to now nah, nah, that's over. I'm look, I learn from white supremacy. White supremacy will leave a motherfucker in ignorance and utilize them to their benefit. And I think that we need to do the same. There are, we we hug too close to morality. And and the only thing I love is my brothers that understand that we are African, we build an African nation, we want liberation. If you outside of that, I, you're fooled. I, everybody else is fooled. Right. If you're not black power, I, I don't I don't give a fuck. I don't care what God think about me. I'm not trying to get to heaven. I, I no. Only I'm black power banging. It's African or nothing. I, I'm for real about that. I, everybody else is fooled. Right. That's right. You can't say that, brother. You sinning. I am a sinner, a proud sinner. I, I love sin. That one, if it wasn't for sin, I wouldn't be here. Thank God for sin. <laughs> All 
Right. And, and, and look, keep it 100. If Jesus ever come back, the kidnapping is going down, and I'm selling blood packs on deck. 10 G's. <laughs> 10 G's. Look at the blood of Jesus. You want to you want to sack? It's going down. You probably get a meal for that pack. <laughs> you feel me? You feel me? Yeah. Hell yeah, man. Shit. <laughs> On the real, go on platter. You want these Jesus packs? <laughs> Jesus <laughs> blood, some bloody Jesus shit. You, you can't send that through no cash. Like, that'd be all wide transfer. <laughs> all wide. Hey, that's going through the, uh, what they call that, the dark web. You feel me? <laughs> Not to mention, we cutting up the garment. The garment is, is for sale, too. All that. Matter hey, look! I'm gonna I'm I'm give me a whale, so I'm gonna start selling me some garment pieces. You feel me, Jesus garments? Hey, look! Don't don't let me uh, chop Jesus up and barbecue this nigga. We gonna have the communion of the lifetime, cause you know Christians like to eat Jesus and drink his blood. These motherfuckers are cannibals and vampires. They they into both of them, and they don't know it. They want to who in the fuck want to eat? They want these the Christians want to eat their God. <laughs> Not only they happy God died, they selfish as fuck. And God died for them. Oh, man, man, you going to hell, man. You going straight to hell. <laughs> I to tell you. Hey, look, I don't want to. Ain't no, ain't no bad bitches in heaven. <laughs> hey, but look, these people are happy God died, and then. They eat Jesus and, and drink his, even if it's symbolically, because they, they said that to lust is sin. So you don't have to actually commit the act. Just wanting to think about wanting yeah, to commit the act right, of yeah. sin. So lusting about drinking Jesus' blood and eating in cannibalism, eating his flesh, should be a sin too. I'm. These people are lunatics, homie. That's not a sin. That's called communion. I know they gave they gave vampirism and, and cannibalism one word communion. Yes, they put it all in one, and and that didn't come from Africa. I'm not, but I, I'm gonna leave that topic alone. <laughs> well, let me ask you, man, on, on, on the topic of the light, what do you like? What do you see in the future for our people, man? Um. Now, I'm because I'm, I'm out here in these streets and I'm telling right. you, look, there's pockets. There's pockets of survival and there's pockets of destruction. A lot of our people are going to get destroyed. Um, there's three types of people, family, allies, enemies. Now, there's whites that's going to be allies and may even breed in and their children will become family. That's that's happening. Um there's, That's there's been happening though. Well, not as I'm no, I'm, I'm talking about on an actual family side. I'm talking about they they actually chose to rock with the Africans. Like that, that's it. I'm talking about their the fanaticism in them say I'm rocking with the Africans, and that's it. That has been happening very slow. The direction is switching and it's changing. Um the the energy the way it's going it's um it, it, i will have to i will have to take you out and show you you know what i mean and, and it's crazy you get in the car and drive and miss so much you get on a motorcycle and see more than you see on the car you get on a bike and see more than you see on the motorcycle but if you walk you really see it and you really get to know Especially if you ride, like see me, I ride, and when I'm riding, I stop and talk to random people, no matter race, religion, no matter. And in and the energy that, that you get from them, you see that the US itself is mutating, morphing, and it's morphing into something different. And then you the European, well, not, not the European, the white supremacist is losing control. Uh, and it's, it's, what's crazy is because they push an LBGT, and right. that's also a part of them losing control. That's actually yeah. making it spiral faster out of control. To where if we, like, for example, our fanatics don't need to fight against LBGT, accept it. 
right? So in the black community, if it's and we are like, why should we, we have to? What? Oh no! Why should we accept that though? I'm gonna tell you why. Okay. In the black community, uh, polygyny need to be pushed. Polygyny. That's okay. a man with two wives that need yeah. to be pushed no. heavy, heavy. Um. Uh. And we need to push whatever relationship that you want, get in it and stay in it. Right. If it's a man, two men, three men, fuck it. That's your relationship you want, get in and stay in it. A woman, two women, three women, you want that's what you want, get in it, stay in it. If it's a woman with multiple husbands, get in it, stay in it. If it's a man with multiple wives, get in it, stay in it. Now, if we get in these different, those, those four, if we get in those four different relationships and we stay in it. And we stay in it for the next 50 years. Which population of people will be the largest? Man, but I'm just saying, talking about a man and man and man. They ain't going to produce nothing. Right. So that's going to be and eliminated too. right off the bat. So if they, if everybody getting these relationships to stand, their population is going to die within that first generation. Right. So yeah, we don't even need to right. fight it here. They're not reproducing it. Only thing they could try to do is go out and propagate and try to entice people into it. But if our man is getting in a relationship and absorbing our women, then how can you be enticed into some fuckery? So our men, we need to, what we, we need to focus on is our men absorbing our sisters so these bitch niggas can't get our sisters. Because we got these brothers that want the sisters, and the sisters been in a situation to where you have multiple single sisters, their sex drive get turned up, and they become more aggressive. So the men that are single that don't, we so we basically have to push the men taking responsibility. So the, if our men don't take responsibility, then they're going to just take advantage of the sisters and their vulnerability. Sure. So that's why we have to push polygyny. And if and if if our for the if the African liberation fanatics have the women and, and it's actually working and we we focus more that's why I said we live your die for the black woman and child and nation building starts at home. So if we focus our attention not on oh the cracker the cracker or the police brutality and run into all this police brutality shit, we focus on home and then our suicide pact is you live next to me. I'm going to make sure that your house is guarded. And brother, I'm going to make sure your house is guarded. Your relationship, if I see your wife out in public, I'm going to make sure she gets to her car safe. And if we start to get that mentality, it's yeah. ants. The ant. The ant is stand for Africans in top spots. Ants. And an ant don't look to the side and see who doing more work. I'm doing more work than you. An ant do the work it do, takes. Do whatever work it takes and whatever is necessary to build a colony. Each one of us have to get that selflessness and get rid of selfishness. And once we, be, we, we get rid of selfishness and become selfless and become selfless for our family, and then after we gain that, we live, kill, die for our black woman and child, that I'm gonna make sure that your queen is safe anytime she's out in public. That's right. So once we start locking in that way, it don't matter how many homosexual men is doing what they doing, how many homosexual women is doing what they doing. They not, it's a death style. Their death style is going to die. It can't break it produce itself. It's only perpetuating itself because of the, the white supremacy is in power. Right. Our culture is naturally going to extinguish that. So we just got to let our culture deal with it, not us. We just got to build the culture. It's chess, brother. It's chess. Chess. You're playing chess. <clears throat> All right, it's chess, right? Right. What's going to be in the way of us taking our homes back? You said taking our what back? Our homes. Our homes. Our uh, women and children. Well, The United States infrastructure, right? 
And let's go back to you know I say because we we go macro and then we go micro. And we understand the macro, the micro we could start to develop the micro off the macro. The United States infrastructure is a D. It's a D. It, now, last time I checked, it was a D plus. I got to check it again. Um, I think it was like the Civil Corps of Engineers give it a grade. And what that means is basically the roadways, the bridges, the everything that it takes for the U.S. economy, like the brother said, the black economy, the U.S. economy, right? Brother John was mentioning that. So everything it takes for the economy to operate, it's on the verge of failure. The U.S. is in no position to turn her nose up to skilled workers. You could right now, let me, let me ask y'all this. Have y'all went, because you mentioned, and this all have to do with us taking our homes back. Have y'all been to any stores or any restaurants and they was understaffed? Yes. That's cr- all of us have. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? That in a, in a place that need jobs and job creation, there's, uh, they understaffed. Our people right now, need to embrace the mindset that our sisters and brothers was in during slavery. We have to embrace that mindset. Black folks need to basically take a hundred steps back, buckle the fuck down, make up our bootstraps and go for it. And I say that because it is. To take our homes back, men will have to go work at McDonald's and be proud of that McDonald's job until he get better. Go work at Home Depot or any of these other jobs and be proud of it until he get better and always strive to do better. So we work on, we, we go take all these understaffed jobs right now. Go take all of them because the illegals aren't able to get them right now. And if it fall too far, they're going to make it to where the illegals could get them. When the illegals get them, we're not going to get them and we're going to be cut off. So if we, since we could get them, we need to get them and utilize those pennies. They say if you watch your, your pennies, your dollars to stay in check. So if we start watching our pennies with this job, we become, work on our financial literacy, rich dad, poor dad. We work on our financial literacy with these pennies that we could re- actually start to build wealth as a collective for like companies like the um, or, or groups like the UNIA. And if we study the UNIA, study, well, all we got to do is study us. The UNIA took those same people that was getting pennies and bought ships. See, so in whole, this time, go ahead, go ahead. That's the whole, see, it's so simple, but that's the whole problem right there. Right there. We'll go get them jobs and go our separate ways and live our own separate lives. We don't come back as a collective whole and do things together to build our economy, you know what I mean, to build our community and stuff. That's the whole problem right there. It's coming together. Right. Right. Be- because that have, that have to do with a conversation we had before. But one, once we get these cards, and we get these cards, and we become the UNIA, we get our UNIA member cards. You know what I mean? We go utilize these cards to be able to get into an event. We got to start throwing events. You show this card, you get in these events. The card you update. get this treatment. Your card huh? updated. Your card updated. Uh, it, let me see. Hell, it, it, shit. I paid for a year. I, I paid I everything up I'm talking. I think I had to update mine, too. Yeah, I reached out. I, I, I reached Matter of fact, I might <laughs> have to, have to, see, I have let, to let, make let sure. Let me look at it. Hold on. I just, I, called, I, to, I just called Ross Marvin today, say, yo, I'm about to send you a picture. I need to update my card. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> Hey. Oh no. Fuck. It expired. I gotta I gotta re-up. You good. We, we yeah, we did it for like a year. You good. We go. I just I just locked your number in. I thought I had you like uh in everything, but I didn't have you in the right database. You you got the 310 number? Yes. All right, yeah. You you should start getting some information now. Cool, cool. I gotta re-up. I gotta re-up. I, I, I need to do that. ASAP. I could do no, not tomorrow, but Sunday, Monday, 
I, I do that. We go, we go get paid in full. And this is important that y'all pay in full. Whoever watched this, that y'all join the UNIA and get paid in full, get be part of a collective and even just be part of the information, the information uh wave. Good until um July. July My it's February for me. It's a good thing you say that. I just looked at it. I'm thinking I'm straight. Damn, it's been that long. <laughs> Time flies for real. Uh, Time flies. And we almost, yeah, we about to be six months into 2022 right now. Yeah. Man, so, and, and this is the thing. This is what I'm seeing. So, right now, the process, we're, we're going to talk offline with that. We're going to talk offline with that. Because, brothers, I'm telling y'all, it's so much going on right now. And, and, and once we talk about this whole situation, there's power that can be gained. And in the moving, the I'm talking about the state to state, that's done. Yeah. What's up, man? How you doing? I love you, man. Give me, what's up? Let me see your haircut. Oh, you see the see everybody? Oh man, you oh, okay, you fly, man. Yeah. What's up? Like that. <laughs> that's my, that's my baby boy. Looking good. What's up, <laughs> boy? Hey, where you been? I was in the bathroom. Oh, okay. I'm going to talk to you after I'm done with this, okay? Okay. All right. Oh, my baby. Yeah. Oh, my baby boy. And now that one right there, that's my foreman. How old is work- he? Uh, he eight. Okay. Yeah, when I'm working on the house or doing something around the house, man, uh, even, even when he outside, he want to... Here go on my touche. I just built a shed. Here go get the dolly. He wants the tools. He doesn't want to play with the tools. He wants to play with my tools. <laughs> then my cool. other son, he been on me because he want to buy a book. He, he told me he want to buy one about the Wright brothers, some science. I just broke out the Nile Valley civilization because I'm about to start going that through um, over that with him. You know right. what I mean? And I want him to get to know the different rivers and things of that nature. Uh, start. We're going to start studying strategy. My oldest son, when it comes to strategy, like he, his mind, his, the way he computes is different. Uh, I got I got to teach them both of them, che- checkers and chess, because uh, chess helped change the way I think. And, um, and he loved playing cash flow. I don't know if y'all have cash flow. It's a it's a board game. Y'all, y'all got it? Never, I never heard of cash flow. Oh, there's a, it's called cash flow 101. It's, uh, I know you heard of Rich Dad Poor Dad. Yeah. But it's a financial game. It's like it's like Monopoly time two. So in this uh, game. Is that from Derek Grayson? No. Okay. okay. That was Robert Kuwasaki. I'm talking about the board game that you're talking Derek, about. Yeah, Derek Grace got a board game. But no, okay. this is Robert Kuwasaki board okay. game. Okay, okay. But in this game, you pick a profession, and in a profession, you have debt, and you have to pay off your bills as you go around and stuck in a rat race. And you have, and the thing is, when I first played with everybody, they was playing against me because they know how I play Monopoly, and I'm competitive, and everybody was focusing on what I was doing. I'm like, y'all, I don't know why y'all focusing on me, but the game is you have to focus on your own finances, so you're playing against yourself. You have to pay off your bills and do right by your money in order to get rat race. If not, you'll be stuck in rat race. They have some people that be stuck in it. They never get out. You know what I mean? And he loved playing the game. Everybody else is just like, oh, they want to go about their separate ways. So I try to keep him in tune. And even with having a group of men, this is another thing. Having a group of men that's going to, like the brother mentioned, the testosterone. But having a group of men but guided testosterone to where we bring our sons amongst that group of men that he get other men to help model himself as a man. So it, it's like I, I model myself as my after my father, but now he get to see how his testosterone work in a society. So it's us creating a society that our boys could grow up under. And that's, that's what, and I, and what made me think of that as the Crips because People be like, out here, they be like, man, you stand like this. Ah, they, they like, man, you stand, do you always stand like that? But that was the society I was raised in. The society molded me 
this particular way. And I didn't even know it was doing it. It was subconscious. So we could do this very same thing that we have to start coming together with our children. You know what I mean? And, and it's going to happen. Our, our children should be friends. Right. So that way we're raising the second generation. But man, hey, when we get when we when we, when we tap in, you know what I mean? Hey, man, it, and the bros already the bros already tapped in. We we got some we got some stuff going, and, and, and basically what I, I I told you about already, Ken Wardo, you know what I mean? That situation, and right. that 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 situation right there gonna be able to I, 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 there's so much power that will come out of this situation. Hey man, uh, keep your calendar open, man, for October the thirteenth, man. Um, what is it? Is it the thirteenth? Or is it the fourteenth? No, no, no. Always the thirteenth. I'm sorry. We are gonna do another Pan African flag that. Uh, carry, Let's man. do it. I'm with it. We are gonna have a flyer. Knowledge doing the flyer, man. So, man, I'm gonna send it to you. So, hey, man, you know, keep your by calendar. October. I should be in a position. It's gonna be in August. August thirteen. My fault. All okay, right. Let's Even flag by- that. March, April, May. Yeah, let's flag that. Well, even by August, I should be able to in a position to be able to have a couple of the motorcycles out there with the flag on it. Mm. That'd be mm. hard body, yeah, man. That'd be, yeah, that'd be perfect. Yeah, so, yeah. So we'll be able to block off traffic and and, and, and let the cars go. And, yeah, man, you, you know better me? do that, man. That's, that's yeah. man, you got some muscle, that's man. We got, right, man. We gonna keep in tune, man. We keep in tune with you, Black Power. Yeah, yeah. hey, look, brother. You already know we family. Yeah. I love y'all, yeah. man. Yeah. Hey, look. You already know. And look, the even the pictures. Everybody loving the pictures. You know what I'm talking about? And <laughs> hey, you got rebel on that motherfucker, like. <laughs> yeah, the pictures too. Take some hey, hey, pictures. hard look. We just, I'm gonna hey. repost them, man. I'm gonna repost them, man. I look at them like, yeah, man. But this time hey. it's gonna be even bigger because we're gonna Brother. do it on that file on the Saturday. Let's make a poster. Let's put some money together, make a poster, and we pass. I'm with it, man. I put I'm right. with it, man. Do it together. Yeah. I'm with it. No shit. Somebody hey, put so, so, so what we could do is that same picture. Um is we get a saying. Whatever saying, it could be an African quote or something we come up with. We put it on the picture, and when we do an event, we pass the poster out. You know what I mean? And it, it could be something like a web and, and also a website, an app that's on it. And if we could get children to start posting this picture up on a wall because they RBG and they want to they want to join RBG and they posting it on the wall. Now here we go. You know what I mean? They know who to tap in with. It's happening with the UNIA. It's happening with the RBGs in Atlanta. You know what I mean? It could be RBG Atlanta. And we put that on the bottom of that picture and, and make a poster because posters are going to come back. Everything that went out is going to come back. Yeah, right. So let's be the first ones to do it. Mm-hmm. I'm with you. I'm with it, man. See how much they cost and we just yeah, put our two and fuse together. That's the only thing is the, the, the upfront cost and then selling them back. You know, trying to make you know make your money and make a profit. Well, we are gonna take a hit on that one, brother. All right, <laughs> um, <laughs> we understand it up front. You know? Look, look, we 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 think about a thousand posters, and and um, would you want an RB? We want people that want the RBG poster. A thousand posters, just a thousand. So do so you think? Uh, so this is the this is the goal for that. And I this is giving our strategy again, but all right, I, I'm gonna get it. Fuck it. So you get this poster out, and we really want to try to give it out one to people that have social medias, and hopefully they take a picture with their social in the poster in the background. Gotcha. And we can start a trend. We would take a picture, and we tell people here, we'll give you this poster. Just take a picture in front of it, send it to us, and yeah. we start sending and we start posting everybody that took a picture in front of the poster. On, on our page you know what i mean so next time a poster come out people go on the poster gotcha. they go feel like they go feel left out and they go want to go <laughs> i got you all right, I got you. All right yeah. so look 
We all right. This is what we have to understand, right? Famous is old. It's no. It's archaic. It's out of there. Do you, what what came after famous? What you mean like famous be same as celebrity, right? Yeah, famous got replaced by what? What social media? No, what? But it's a word. What word? We ain't talking about rich. No, famous got replaced by a word, and it has to do with social media. Influencer. Like. Viral. Viral. Okay. Fame. okay. Think about it. We grew up with famous rappers yeah, and famous. Right. Now, now you can go viral and and be on a level of Tupac. Yeah. yeah. Viral. And viral is ephemeral. It only lasts for a short time till you do that next viral thing. Yes. So how do we master viral? We need a we need a team that a think tank that master viral. It, it don't even have to be super viral. It could be semi viral, kind of viral. For it to be semi viral, we can do the caravan, make that thing bang. Everybody go live. Everybody yeah, post that. it. Yeah, whatever, everybody whatever, have to go live. Yeah, whatever, go whatever, live. whatever, um, whatever flyer we have, we post it. We represent, and then right there on the spot, we'll do um, what does the red, black, green mean to you? We can just start interviewing people, yeah. anybody. It didn't make that so bad, like you said. Everybody go live because everybody that's on this feed is not even from Georgia. So yeah, my my stuff go go all the way to Chicago. Rebel shit go go to New York. Your shit go go to Compton. Um, uh, John, she gonna go to Virginia. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's real, yo. That's that's real. Cause that's I don't got people from back home that's seeing what what y'all doing here on on this rebel, you know, rebel roundtable. You know, people in Virginia telling me like, you know, they see what they see what we doing. So you're absolutely right. <clears throat> yeah. Hey, so now now check this, rebel. Yes, sir. We're going to have to get you a wooden table with Rebel on it, then the symbol, and if that's your background, on the table, and we actually going to have to start sitting around this table. We all in, in Georgia. Yeah. That's so when we actually in person I, and I got sit around a, the table, uh, it'll make it like right. the breakfast club. But go ahead, brother. My bad. I got, a, I got a place where we can do it, too, with the production. Where no, Mr. Booker spot in um in um Ellenwood, Georgia. Mr. Booker spot. Yeah, you don't know Mr. Wood. That's my guy. So check it. Even if it's just a regular table, and and we get an actual symbol or something, we sit on the table, and it has to be a round table. They got you. Yeah, you right. Yeah. Well, and, remember, and, and, we uh, were think talking about, about that. that though. Yeah, you right. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, you right. Yeah. yeah. So once, because like right now this is cool. When we in person, and people gonna be they 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 gonna feel like, and, and all right, all right, look, all right, let's go with the psychology, right? So you with four of your homeboys, you meet a female with four of her homegirls, or maybe two of her own girls, three, four, five, six of her homegirls. The next time she see you, one thing she asks about is where is your homeboys. Because she met y'all in a group. Mm. Then now they want to know the group. Mm. And just like boys to men, uh, crisscross. When you see when you see one of them, you want kid and play. You see one of them, it's like, even though you're my favorite one, where's the other one? Yeah. It's the same thing. And in like art, I'll give you, I'll give you another one. I'll give you another example. Uh the, the motorcycle shows, Sons of Anarchy. Uh, Mayans notice that they have table and people watch when they come around that table and their power moves is decided around that table. I give you another one. Red table talk. <laughs> and Rebels Round Table was before that. Nice. I would say that she got what she got from you. She probably seen yours and like I could do something like that, and nobody would never know. So, but the red table is is big right now. Everybody talk, and everybody know it's Jada. But the red table will live beyond her. The red table 
is is there's a culture around that red table talk now. Yeah. She it's didn't say negative Jada. Culture. Say it again. Yeah, that's what I said because of, because of the top. You know what I mean? Because of the top. Brother, because of the discussion. Brother, what kind of culture? No, I said negative because culture. of the topic. A negative culture. But even even the topics, the topics are still a red table talk. Yeah, that's considered red table talk. So now it is is a certain type of talk is this kind of talk. You feel what I'm saying? So you take something that's common in every day, you give it a name, yeah. and then you try to harness it. White supremacy do the same thing. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Um, it's the concept of red table talk that makes it powerful, not necessarily uh, the topics. It's like how the Breakfast Club was at, at one time or – um, you know, a common example would be like Kleenex or Q-tips. You know, those are just uh, products within another family of products, but everybody calls them, you know, Kleenex, you know, even though it may not be that. So the, the concept is so big, it dominates, you know, any anything else in that space. <clears throat> Bad part. And we, look, look, right now, brothers, if we don't understand this time and space that we're in right now, mm. right now, and I didn't know this, we are the most powerful Africans on the face of the planet. Yeah. And, and this is because other Africans have said that we're in this position, not because I'm saying we're in this position or that anybody else here said we're in this position. It's because other Africans around the planet said that we're in this position. Is why I'm even saying that we're in that position. Humble. Yeah. Yeah. We have to do something with it. And we have to give a fanaticism. That's why when I put African or nothing, to say African or nothing, just, just that phrase to push the African or nothing. And I got that phrase from South or nothing. We were saying South or nothing. That was a game banging, but I took it from the Crip and the Blood shit and I put it with the African, African or nothing. Yes, sir. So now it's like, I'm not going to use it for negative, I'm using it for positive now. Even with banging, banging is no, Crips and Bloods are not game bangers. No, Black Power banging is the game banger. They are Crips and Bloods. So it's like Kempo Karate, right? Kempo Karate don't have any blocks. It, you utilize the person's energy against them. You have deflections, and then you, you strike. So if they swing at you, you just deflect. But you, you deflect and get ready for a strike. So the, it's the same thing with us. Let's use the energy of our, of our culture, of, of, of a culture that was given to us against itself and redirect it. We got it. If we don't start to, like, man, we should be in these streets, jump. We should be riding around in a caravan, jumping out, RBG flag real big. What's happening? And pulling up to all these gunners, what's up, y'all good? Black Power Bay, what all that, you know what I mean? And they'll be like, damn, who's y'all? Where y'all from? What? Yes, if we ain't in, if we can't jump out, you know what I mean? And, 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 and if you hell, fuck it, roll some with them. Oh, what you, no, no, fuck that. This, this, that shit right here. Blow, blow with them. Fuck it. Well, we out of here. Hey, look, look, let's go. we about to go over there to Woo Woo. Like, we need to start, like, really be represented out here. Yeah. And, and when they start to see us, and when we start to even video, even look, I got another. Uh, here go another one. We hire a brother or sister to videotape our interactions with the people while we out. Yeah. We get a page and we post that. So what end up happening is now everybody going to be wondering, we y'all coming out. And we get out and we go do this particular, this anything. And we go get to the average people. Now imagine if you in so, because smokers, it, and if you're in a hood, a smoker, if somebody that's addicted to crack is in that neighborhood, is known by everybody in that neighborhood. They're not really known outside of the neighborhood, but everybody in the neighborhood accepts the way they are, and they got love for them. And if they start to see us with, with, with them, this and that, doing something with them, jumping out, bam, eat, even if we jump it out and just eating with them, man, you eating with us, picking them up, fuck it. And, and, and going somewhere and we eating with them. 
if we start to videotape our interactions, the RBGs that's in Atlanta, we become we can become the most powerful RBGs in the U.S. And that's what we should be striving to be the most powerful RBG. Uh, it's it's with other states, and that's a that's a um a productive it's productive uh, competition. Then you know by being in Atlanta, it could be done because right we're in Atlanta. This is supposed to be the Black Mecca right now. So that'll be a motherfucking power move. I agree. Let's bang on them. I agree. Let's bang on them. Come down. We got a few Thank minutes you. left. Uh, uh, any last words for the people before you give us your information? Um, Black Power Banging, African or nothing. Um, I'm Black Power Banging on IG, Black Power Banging on YouTube. Fuck it, Google Black Power Banging, follow, add, let's, let's, let's build. What's up, what's up? Powerful words, brother. Powerful words. You know, you always welcome back anytime. You got the key. All right, up, dude. Let us know when you come back. Hold up, Rebel. I got an announcement real quick. Yes, sir. Uh, Juneteenth. So, June 18th, they having the parade uh, here in Atlanta. Uh, the UNIA will be in the front of the parade uh, carrying flags. So I need as many strong brothers um, that can that can make that walk. It's about a mile and a half. Oh, yeah. I'm with Let's you. do it. But yeah, everybody. I'm going to I'm be ready to. Obasi, we, yeah. Where Obasi at? He trying to get his business on. Uh, All right. He, he cooking. He could. Yeah, he trying to get his business. That's what started. it is. I'm stuck. Yeah. We good money. But yeah, yeah you said 20. June 10th. Yeah, June 10th. June 17th. June 17th. Be ready. It, it's starting where? Uh, Ebenezer Baptist Church. Um, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. The, um, like by Mort. All right. Yeah, I got yeah. you. Uh, by the Martin Luther King. Uh, yeah, Martin Luther King. I said Malcolm. So we gonna march. It's gonna be at the um Shady Stadium again. Um, the Home Depot thing. No, nah, they, they go down to uh, Centennial Park. Oh, he having that Centennial Park this time. Yeah. All right. That's where you had the last hey, time. When is the Malcolm X Festival? It's got uh, them next week. Next weekend. Yeah, you're right. 21st, 22nd. Oh, I'm going to be out of town for that? Oh. <laughs> and guess what? I'm going to be out of town for Juneteenth, man. Wow. I don't know, man. I'm going to tell Shelly, man, because I... I Nah, this representing the UNIA at Atlanta, man. Chapter, man. We gotta be in that front line, man. You know, I'm a front line soldier. I might, I'm probably gonna change up on that, man. Hey, we, we gonna have a booth. I had planned, I had planned on being being in front of that line. We're gonna have a booth too. So, you know, it's it's business opportunity there too. Three days. Now yeah. only do we need younger brothers than yeah. you and I. Yeah, you know the booth. We younger sisters. <laughs> Where you gonna have your booth at? We ain't, I ain't got the location, but I just talked to uh, Bob about it yesterday. Bob. I just got to send him the bread, but he, you know, he gonna take care of us. Nice. I ain't got the location, but we we be hey, in there. Hey Ken, make sure you call me tomorrow, man. We gotta we gotta figure yeah, out, you man. We gotta regroup on some things, man. Man, make really sure you do. call me, man. Hey yeah, Ken, yeah. call. Nah, me. I wanna have my flag out there, man. I ain't wearing my flag in a, in a minute, man. Hey look, hey look, hey look. So the Zulu MC was in a Black Power. I mean, I mean a Black History Parade. Mm -hmm. We I had the flag hanging off the back of the motorcycle in a Black History Parade in Cartersville, Georgia. Cartersville. Up you, you gonna get the brothers come to the um the caravan. We're gonna have to fly. When we're gonna have to fly by by next week. Not not no nah, man, Monday Tuesday. Oh, we're gonna have all okay, flyers by Monday Tuesday. We're gonna have the flyer this week, the virtual flyer, right? I'm and gonna I'm gonna make sure. as soon I'm as we get sure it, I'll pass it to make to sure you brothers. give it to the brothers because they need to be in the Kevin Ryan van with the RBG with us, man. Hey Ken, hey Ken, hey Ken, send me that link, man. So I give me another flag, man. I lost my other one. I got a flag. I get him for cheap. Ross, Mar Ross Marvin gave me the leak about two years ago, man. Yeah, give me the link, man. I need two flags. Yeah, my, my son, my son going to be out there, too. Yeah, we go jam, man. We go rock and roll. And then you know the following Hey, hey look, 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 look. Let me ask you this. We should do a barbecue that day as well. That's what I'm saying. We should do something after the, uh, I, no, I can't do nothing, man. I got I'm going to be down. I got to go down to Alabama at about five o'clock, man, after that. Yep. 
Man, you know we need your energy at anything we do, man. I be laying back, man. Gonna... Really... <laughs> so we gonna have to do it the, the following week then, or something. I mean, I mean after the caravan, I'm going to uh, yeah, I gotta head down to Alabama, man, man. Shut got me. I'm everywhere on the weekends, man. Going all out of the state and stuff now, man. That's oh, it. that's what it is. But hey, but look, Alabama's still the Republic of New Africa. Right, right. But you said Alabama's still the what? Republic, Republic of New Africa. Africa. How is that? Because it's Louisiana, states. Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina. Florida ain't. I thought Florida was in the two. That it was just the five states. Yeah, it's only five. Uh, I always thought Florida was the Republic too. Now. And then you know, not to mention before we get off, you know, we got the uh, Marcus Garvey Festival the weekend after the caravan. It's gonna be on the twentieth. Oh, 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 that's gonna be dope. Black Hold Power. On. So, the Marcus Garvey and the Malcolm X, I'm missing both of them. No. Oh. No. No, 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 Black Power Marcus Bank. Garvey in August. <laughs> the Marcus Garvey gonna be August the 20th. The, uh, oh, Saturday, okay, cool. I'm tripping. I'm tripping. After the caravan, Black Power. Man. You know what I mean? Oh, no, I'm, I'm just missing then, the Malcolm X Festival. And then, and then, I'm gonna make, hold on. Then, the weekend after that, it's gonna be the RBG Festival, Black August. Man, I, you know, Texas used to do an RBG uh weekend that month. It, they had it popping. A Lone Star RBG, they had it popping. Yeah, we got to get an big. RBG week. Hey, look, we need an RBG weekend. Let's get with the brothers and sisters of um of um the um of, of Freedom Town, Georgia, and we can start bringing the energy down there. We could camp out, do an RBG weekend, to where we do a. A two day, three day camping. I'm with it. They got the land. Republic of New Africa. If you put conscious offices, C O R O N A, it's spelled Corona. Conscious offices of the Republic of New Africa. Damn. Corona. Why you had to do that? <laughs> hey. Hey, hey, look. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's pause real quick. <laughs> look at how the brother mind worked. The brother mind was computing. It's like, you know, you know how when you try, they have a computer and they trying to break a code and it's like, Doot! it's picking letters. His mind was just running. Hey, the way you came up with that, though. That's your fire, yo. <laughs> the way you came up with that, though. Oh. That's what's up. We're going to put it somewhere, yo. Definitely that. We got to take the power back, right? The genius in that, though. Definitely got to take the power back. Can we all be playing around? Let me ask you this. Hey, Hardgrove, in, in the caravan, no, no, no choppers? That's what's up. Baby. Uh... Just regular. And we're online, man. Yeah. I don't care man. about that, man. Well, hold on. I mean, honestly. Hey, hold on. Georgia is an open carry state now. You know, we you carry now. And hey, you can concealed carry. carry. Georgia open carry. carry and concealed and concealed. carry. Now. Hey, but look, let me tell you all that. Still get your concealed carry license because yeah. that that's only in Georgia. But if you get the concealed carry license, it's acceptable in other states. So when you go into other states, you still able to conceal carry because you got the Georgia conceal carry license. You gotta be careful with that because they have to recognize it. They don't. They don't have to uh, acknowledge it. Um, all the all the southern states and mo the majority of the states on the uh, east coast recognize it. See, I went to what was it? I was in Philly uh, and I almost got oh, yeah. caught up. Uh, yeah, they laws different. Yeah, they, yeah, he's telling the truth. Pennsylvania is an open carry state, but Philly is. I don't know what the name of it, but as a city, they don't allow uh, open carry. Or yeah, open like carry. if you go like Illinois, New York, that shit don't apply there. Yeah. Nah, Illinois, no, New York don't. don't. Yeah, California nah. don't. I think Nevada don't. don't. Are you going west? Play that shit. It lose, it lose, it lose strength. I, I could tell you though, because I, I know about hard. Um, Florida take Georgia, um, Alabama, Mississippi. And um, it's one more. Hold on, I could tell but you. That's what I don't know if y'all know about that brother Spike, who was uh down trying to support brother Othel with uh, um NFAC. Brother, yeah. 
brother Spike got locked up because he had a concealed carry license, but it was out of state. And Florida didn't well, recognize I don't know where he was accepted. from, but they didn't recognize it. So he got locked up for that. No, actually, actually was Spike. It, it was uh it was expired. Ah. Hey, look, I was look so me and Otho and the rest of them, I met up with them. I heard they was doing an event. So I I, I got uh, connected with him. If you go to my IG, you see a picture with me with him. Uh, we 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 got actually because we went to Douglas Police Station. We was gonna meet at the mall. So I'm pulling up, and I was just gonna ride straight directly to the group. I want to, you know, do reconnaissance before I move into the group. But they had police officers all around the mall. That was like, damn, that is crazy that they got police officers all around this mall. They knew that this was going to happen. So they watching this. Um, so I end up saying, fuck it. I'm about to go find me an overwatch position and watch from a distance and connect with them when they about to move out. So I went outside the mall parking lot and went around the perimeter of the mall and every parking lot around that mall had other officers hiding out of sight. They had uh, two rings of officers. So, and then when I, I said, fuck it, well, I'm going to move in and I moved in and parked. And homie, it hurt me so bad. I was I was doing a live, and I start. I broke out in tears, like how I'm disorganized we are, and how they just trying to destroy everything we do. Mm-hmm. Um, they had a motherfucker pull up about thirty yards from me, and was taking pictures. And I'm like, that gotta be one of them boys. The way he pulled up and never got out. That's one of them boys. I later seen the pictures online and they was posting them like, look, they was taking pictures of us. And then when we get up there uh, and, and, and Otho was turned up, he was new into the information and he was turned up. A good brother, kind hearted brother though. You know what I mean? And, uh, and he was riding his car and as, as I connected with him as they was leaving, he was in the back seat, pulled up his thing. I'm like, man, you turned up. You feel me? He was mad at me because I said, um, I like to thank Trey Pounds, uh, not Trey Pounds, I think that's his name, the, the Officer Pounds, uh, from inviting us in because they invited us in. It was a, everybody had their guns. I left my guns. I'm like, man, fuck that. I don't know what the fuck about to go on. I had a first aid kit, keeping it all the way 100. You know what I mean? I had a first aid kit with me and we was walking to, uh, the police station, and uh, we I ended up taking pictures with every, everybody. This was because one of the, uh, the brother uh, got killed. He got murdered, and he was hanging. So we went up there, and we, we was in on the third floor of the police station and was having a cool conversation. <laughs> Otho go tell the, he gonna tell the motherfucking officers, man, you see, we got guns out there. Some of our guns bigger than y'all. I'm like, man, why the fuck did you say this to these people? It is, we are, I don't think you understand. And, and, and he was in the parking lot. And I don't think he understand the complexity that they had and that they have. He, he's new to it. And I understand when people first come into the information. When they first come into the information, they got this ideals. But like Amos and Wilson said, as you get into African-centered and you become African-centered, it'll actually help you get along with these people. Mm. You know what I mean? And as you get into it, you tend to calm down. You tend to see the real fight. The mm. fight is in your backyard. The fight is you growing your food. And they not just bringing guns. Hey, you growing fucking tomatoes. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it, 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 that's where our fight is. And the fight ain't even necessary with them. It's with ourselves. Once you understand it, 
And then after he ended up going in, this fight was like, I'm about to quit my job and go down there. And I, I was trying to tell him, I'm like, look, check this out. Don't quit your job. If you feel like you could quit your job and you don't need your money, then how about you work, work your job and give every one of your paychecks to his case? He went down there anyway to Florida and he ended up in jail. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm still connected with sis, brothers and sisters. That was it. And as a matter of fact, the place where Othel got caught, you know what I mean? Ozone, the place where he got caught was where we was building gardens and we were, was out there shooting. And yeah, they said, you got caught oh, up here in Georgia, right? You stuck yeah, right? yeah, right over there. That's the spot where we was at. And now, uh, no, 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 that spot, some of the people was with the NAFC. Yeah. But they was like, no, well, they had to detach from the NAFC because they didn't like the way they was running the operation. And they st- we started doing our own thing. And I ended up connecting with them. And we just started doing our own. We was just, we was actually guarding. Yeah, we had a, it was a shoot range out there. But nobody was talking about no radical shit. And these, half, these people, half of them was ex-military. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was like, and, and it was just common. Track. Man, these motherfuckers, when they came through to go get them, and the sister was telling me about the situation. Um, not only did they tore, tear down the wall, had a battering ram, and broke the wall in because I rebuilt the door to the house. You know, it built the wall. I rebuilt the wall to the house. They tore that whole motherfucker down. They tore down the shed, and and the, the they didn't tear down the uh, the, the treehouse he was in. That was actually built by another brother. You know, what I mean, he built it with scrap material as well. But it became a haven for people that came and started living communal. That land was a, a, a part of living communal. You know what I mean? It wasn't anything radical. It was like growing food, living communal, but everybody's still getting jobs and still working and far away from NAFC. You know what I mean? So, yeah, when they came, they took the, the, the battering rams and they, they MRAP vehicles and ran it all over the garden, broke down fences. They did extra stuff they didn't have to do. You know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, and, and as a matter of fact, the sister that uh hold on. The sister that was there, her son was in the woods. And it was a different reason why he was. It was it was a family dispute. Why he went and took a tent and went and lived in the woods versus living in the house. Um, that they was they because Oprah ended up cutting his dreads, but she was saying they they was coming to kill him, and I got it from somebody else that they wanted to kill him. It was it was no talking. They was coming to shoot, and but they end up um end up having him in handcuffs, and they didn't know it was him, so they was waiting for her son to come out. When her son came out, he had locked. She's like, look, that's my son. That ain't, you know what I mean? Once they found out that wasn't him and they found out that they had ozone and cuffs already, that's when they end up taking the pictures and things of that nature. So start looking at, so the gang mentality is all throughout the United States. To, to, to make a long story short, the gang mentality all throughout the United States, police officers had the same mentality as Crips and Bloods. It's just U.S. You're, you're part of the United States and with this mentality. You know what I mean? And right now is we trying to change this mentality from being from being so destructive even amongst races you know what i mean i mean right now races like people races against each other like at the race period like asians blacks white uh, africans europeans whatever polynesians that people start to work cohesively and there is a divide before the unite because the polynesians have problems with each other Samoans and Tongans beef. You know what I mean? You have Japanese and Chinese beef. So it's people, Asians need to go get their problems solved and settled. The Africans need to get their problems solved and settled. Polynesians need to get their problems solved and settled. Europeans, same thing. Once we start to do this, then we could be able to start to come together and, and unite as a, a global people. You know what I mean? But first, it's, it's the separation. Solve your in, inner family problems to have your family be able to connect with other families. You know what I mean? just to be able to end it off on that so people won't try to paint us out at this we hate everybody hate the world type thing 
we have a long-term goal and we have short-term goals. But short-term goals is a war for black against black to get black, black, black. And live, kill, die for the black woman and child and make sure that black woman and child ever live in the United States of America without being murdered and killed. Ever walk down the street without being harassed. That's what we own first. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I want well, me personally, I can't speak for everybody. Me personally, I don't want them to be to come down on me and try to attack the brothers for something I do. You know what I mean? So yeah. But other than that, we own. You're gonna end it on that. Powerful brother. Uh everybody else give out your info. Yo, I'm Ken Wado. You can catch me on Facebook, Ken Wado More. You know, check out our our uh, Sun Got It Sense Facebook page, Sun Got It Sense, uh, Sun Got Sun Got It underscore Sense on IG. I can't just fly half from him. Yeah, yeah. That definitely <laughs> I got that from you. Black's Power Bank support. Yeah, yeah. Can't <laughs> on IG. Get that dope African Senate gear. You know what I'm saying? So you can reach me at 470 798 8527. Yep. Yeah, you check us out. Um, Aesthetics Apparel, E S T H E T I K S. Aesthetics Apparel on all social media platforms. Uh, that's my brand. And uh, you want any custom t shirts and apparel, go to Elite Wardrobe Shop, E L I T E Wardrobe Shop. You can also call me at 404 913 7165. Um, and just come check us out, you know, support, you know, we put a lot of symbolism into the brand and everything. So come check us out. I hey, get my number from the brothers too, brother. If you don't got it, yeah, tap in. You know what I mean? This bill, make sure I got you locked in. Yeah, we got yeah I put your number in the um, chat. Cool. John, you got it, John. Appreciate it, brother Rebel. Uh, yeah, just continue to organize the UNIA uh, in Atlanta and um, anybody that's uh, outside of Atlanta, uh, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, cbpm.org forward slash join 421. Or you can reach me on my, you can reach me on cell 678-631-9404. Race first. Race first. You want to know that? Rebelvision.com or realancientchemistry.com. You got the last, you got the last second. Hey, so I want to show this, uh, this the B1. I'm trying to get everybody to understand the black first. This is a diamond in the, in the motorcycle industry. Uh, in the motorcycle scene, they have the, uh, the one percenter diamond. It's, it's just little things like this, that if we could spread knowledge in, in of, of little things, and that people will start to connect to race first, black first, African and nothing, black power banging, um, RBG, UNIA, Republic of New Africa, these things. If we start to push these things amongst us, get these slogans and live these slogans, become fanatic about liberation, we are, and we, we let it go. Understand that these very same grounds in this country is the our people is enslaved on this. That's not shit on the legacies let's build powerful empires and we could build an empire so and I, I mean, we just at the beginning of the empire power to the people power to the people y'all we out of here thanks for looking out yo like share and subscribe rebels round table rebel vision television and we out of here good looking out guys us 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 I got the mind of a king You should really protect them Everybody talking but rebel really the next I got one. the mind of a king Spread to never take this Slavery fake hip hop you dead if you were racist I got the mind of a king You could never replace this Blood from the mud no love so I'ma say I got the mind of a king I know where I am from now I'ma wake him up you keep him sleeping up to me I got the mind of a king